Hi guys! So today we are going to talk about musculoskeletal system. <laughs> That's just my vlog <laughs> voice. Anyways, um, yeah, so these are my notes on musculoskeletal system, uh, starting with suprascapular nerve entrapment. So the history was something like um, they went on hiking, they came back, and now the person has shoulder pain, right? And the uh, physical examination shows that they have weakness of abduction and external rotation. So this from step one, first aid, supraspinatus, uh, uh, does abduction and it's supplied by suprascapular nerve. Infraspinatus, suprascapular nerve as well, but here it uh, does external rotation. Paris minor does external rotation, supplied by axillary. Subscapular is supplied by subscapular. Uh, it does internal rotation and adduction, right? Um, so since there's problem with abduction and external rotation and we have the history of hiking so we can assume that they had a backpack on and the backpack itself, the strap, it, imp uh, it caused impingement or entrapment of this suprascapular nerve here, right before it's applied to this, the insertion of infraspinatus and supraspinatus, right there, right? Um, the way I remember this is um, I place it like this horizontally, S-I-T-S, -S, sits, and then A for abduct with a B, E for external rotation. Uh, for teres minor, it's adduction, uh, add with a D, and E for external rotation, and add for um, adduction again, and I for internal rotation. So A, E, add E, add I, right? Another way to remember this is If that helps, <laughs> I'm moving on. Um, Paget disease of bone, right? Um, it's the one where they have like uh, skull, uh, the hat gets tighter. Um, they see lesions on x-rays, um, they're sclerotic lesions on the skull, the spine, maybe even long bones. Uh, like femur and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah, and ALP is usually really high for these. So if you have isolated ALP finding where LFTs are normal and everything else, ESR and all of these other findings are normal, even calcium and phosphorus, but ALP uh, jumps out at you, it's usually going to be this. So you will try to do imaging for this or bone scan or x-ray right um and treatment is bisphosphonate okay um the main thing here is they might give you is uh hearing loss and this is the only bone condition which will cause hearing loss okay uh, that gets tested on um so anyways most patients are asymptomatic bone pain and deformity skull headache hearing loss spine spinal stenosis and radiculopathy um, and long bone and so bowing uh, fracture arthritis of adjacent joints giant cell tumor osteosarcoma pathogenesis osteoclast dysfunction increased bone turnover lab uh, testing elevated alp elevated bone turnover marker uh pnp i'm a pnp you don't know what you talk about. Um, urine, hydroxyproline, um, calcium, and phosphorus, usually normal. Imaging, x-ray, osteolytic or mixed lytic sclerotic lesions. Bone scan, focal uh, increase in uptake, and bisphosphonate for treatment. Okay. PINP is procollagen type 1 and terminal pro peptide all right um so increased radio tracer uptake in skull lower back spine and other bones paget disease of bone can cause focal enlargement weakness or fracture of bone involvement of long bones can cause bone pain 
bowing and arthritis in adjacent joints. Spinal involvement can lead to radiculopathy and uh, spinal stenosis. Involvement of cranial bones may cause frontal bulging, headaches, cranial nerve dysfunction, and hearing loss. So that's the dead giveaway there. Um, Paget's disease of bone is characterized by osteoclast dysfunction with a focal increase in bone turnover. All right. Uh, reactive arthritis. So reactive arthritis is the one where um, you have a GI or genitourinary infection and it gets treated and then um, after a couple of weeks they start getting symptoms like arthralgia, uh, keratoderma, whatever this is and then like some kind of lesion on penis or genitals, right? Uh, reactive arthritis. Let's go through this first. Uh, preceding infection. So GI, Salmonella, Shigella, Yzernia, uh, Campylobacter, Clostridioides, uh, Difficile, and Genitourinary, uh, Chlamydia, and Trichomatis, right? And uh, musculoskeletal, asymmetric peripheral oligoarthritis, Enthesitis. Uh, and dactylitis okay um, these are important because and well this one mostly because enthesitis if individually uh, isolated finding uh, you find it in plantar fasciitis but if it is uh, you know found with something else then it's usually what is it is it this and I think it's this and gonorrhea was it no, that was tenosynovitis. It will come to me. Uh, it's in this note somewhere uh, why this is important. So we'll go over that there. Oh, spondylo ankylos, uh, spondylitis, ankylosing spondylitis. That's a major clue for that. There you go. Uh, dactylitis okay. can be seen in this as well. Uh, extraarticular syndrome. Symptoms, uh, ocular, uveitis, conjunctivitis, okay, can't see, uh, can't pee, can't bend my knee, right, uh, oligoarthritis, there, so, ur urthritis, cervicitis, uh, prostitis, derma, keratoderma, derma, blepharnorrhigum, right, so these are like hyperkeratic plaques on soles, manifestation of red, uh, red, reactic uh, arthritis uh, and oral ulcers oral ulcers again uh, it, you won't find it in a lot of stuff but the places you find it it's highly uh, it's not specific basically it's sensitive but not specific finding if it makes sense so you'll find it in this you'll find it in SLE uh, management antibiotics for the underlying infection uh, NSAIDs if NSAIDs fail or are contraindicated then you give corticosteroids uh, intraarticular then systemic and then you give uh, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs or DMARD okay. so reactive arthritis are you a self limited immune mediated spondyloarthritis that develops after certain genitourinary like uh, chlamydia or gastrointestinal for example salmonella shigella and campylobacter infections uh, diagnosis is based primarily on clinical factors typical features include the following acute onset is one to four weeks after infection with a known causative organism monoarthritis or asymmetric inflammatory or arthritis with pain that improves with activity involving the larger large lower extremity joints for example hip or knee enthesitis uh, for example ankle tenderness to palpation dactylitis these are sausage fingers or sacroiliitis extra articular uh, features such as conjunctivitis or uveitis uh, urethritis cervicitis Characterderma, blepharonocum, and all of this stuff, and 
circinate um, balanitis. So that's this raised white borders and geographic patches uh, and superficial serration on the glans penis. So that's the one that might throw you off and you might think like it's cancroid or canker or something like that. But it's a common finding in uh, directive arthritis. Inflammatory markers, for example, ESR and CRP are usually elevated in reactive arthritis, but no lab final test is diagnostic for this condition. In patients with joint infusion, arthrocentesis is generally advised to rule out the other causes of acute asymmetric arthritis, for example, gout, septic arthritis. It typically shows sterile uh, synovitis, uh, for example, inflammatory infiltrate with negative gram stain and culture. Achy pain stiffness in the morning of multiple joints, including MCP and PIP joint pain, uh, relieved uh, after 10 to 15 minutes, plus they work at daycare. So if they are around kids, always go to viral, arthr viral arthritis. Uh, always think of that first before you go to osteo or rheumatic arthritis. <coughs> okay. Another thing, um, MCP and PIP, right? Um, that's a common finding in uh, rheumatic arthritis, right? Uh, but in rheumatic arthritis, they will state that ESR is increased, okay? Um, also, in rheumatic arthritis, the pain uh, is like longer than 30 minutes. It's prolonged. This is short amount of period. It's in like the osteoarthritis range, I think. So ESR n uh, normal, that means it's parvovirus B19 infection. Viral arthritis, that's uh, parvo B virus arthritis, due to parvo B19 is characterized by acute symmetric small joint arthralgia, mild joint pain, swell swelling, and a benign self-limited course. It is usually seen in adults, whereas erythema infectiosum due to parvovirus B19 is more common in children. If ESR is increased, uh, it's gonna be rheumatic arthritis. RA is associated with more pronounced joint swelling, at least 30 minutes of morning stiffness and elevated ESR. 10 to 15 minutes of morning stiffness and a normal ESR as seen in this patient make RA less likely. ESR is increased Plus there's rash and hematologic abnormalities and renal disease and fever and weight loss. This means it's SLE, okay? So rash plus ESR, uh, renal disease, hematologic abnormalities, SLE, okay? Uh, drink water. Systemic sclerosis. Okay, um, pathogenesis, progressive tissue fibr fibrosis, vascular dysfunction. Right. Uh, clinical features, um, skin, telangiectasia, uh, sclerodactyly, uh, digital ulcer, calcinosis cutis, extremities are, uh, you'll find arthralgia, myalgia, contracture, gastrointestinal tract, you'll find esophageal dysmotility, dysphagia, acid reflux. On lungs, you'll find uh, dyspnea, and dry cough, and in vascular system, you'll find Raynaud's phenomenon. Autoimmune uh, antibodies, um, ANA, or antinuclear, uh, antitopoisomerase type 1, this is for diffuse, and anticentromere is for limited. Uh, centromere C is for uh, limited. Okay. And T and D. Okay, so topoisomerase T is for diffuse. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, complications. Uh, lungs. Intraintestinal lung disease. Uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Uh, and kidney hypertension. Scleroderma renal crisis. Uh, severe hypertension. Uh, acute kidney injury and Maha or microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. In heart, you'll find um, myocardial 
fibrosis, pericarditis, and pericardial effusion. Okay. Um, so all the layers over there. Let's see. Uh, so finding in scleroderma, you'll find renal crisis. It is evident by severe hypertension. So you give ACE inhibitor for that. And another question uh, against systemic sclerosis. What does it cause? It causes atrophy of uh, atrophy and fibrosis of the smooth muscles in the lower esophagus, okay, or esophagus, okay. Mm. So esophageal dysmotility. What causes the dysmotility is the atrophy and fibrosis of the smooth muscle in the lower esophagus. Uh, decreased peristalsis and decreased tone. Uh, because of this atrophy and fibrosis of the smooth muscle in the LE. Um, decreased peristalsis and decreased tone in the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay, so there's decrease. In the ecclesia one, it increases it. Where, so this is the one where it decreases it. Uh, so this causes heartburn, dysphagia, sticking sensation in the chest during meals. Okay. Loss of intramural neurons, what does that mean? It means it's ecclesia, increased LES pressure and incomplete LES relaxation. Okay. So ecclesia is loss of intramural neurons. Uh, rheumatical, uh, rheumatologic disease and commonly associated antibodies. Um, so RA, rheumatoid factor, so it's 70 to 80 percent sensitivity and it is high specificity as well um sorry uh, the high specificity test is anti ccp right um for sle uh, sensitivity is high with uh, ana but specificity for that is uh, anti ds dna or anti smith or sm um then you have drug induced lupus again ANA is uh, for all of these are 95 except for the last one. Okay. And uh, antihistone is drug induced specificity. Diffuse sclerosis uh, systemic, sorry. Diffuse uh, systemic sclerosis, ANA 95, and specificity here is uh, anti sclerosis 70. Uh, that's 99. We just looked at that one. Uh, also called uh, anti-topoisomerase. And then we have, because D and T, right? Uh, limited systemic sclerosis is anti-centromere 97, and then polymyositis and dermatomyositis. ANA is 75 sensitivity, uh, but anti jo one is 99. Okay. So all of these are pretty high specificity, and ANA is covers a lot of uh, a lot of these so anti-nuclear antibody is very sensitive but not specific marker for SLE uh, okay so not but non-specific marker for SLE if ANA titer are elevated more specific autoantibodies anti-double stranded DNA can confirm the diagnosis of SLE uh, Raynaud's phenomenon is abnormal vasoconstriction of digital arteries in response to cold or emotional stress. It may be primary or may occur in association with systemic disease, especially autoimmune disorders. Pa patients with suspected secondary Raynaud uh, phenomenon should be tested for autoantibodies and inflammatory markers. Uh, Raynaud phenomenon. Okay, so what was important here? It may be primary or secondary. Uh, sorry, primary or may occur in association with that. This should be tested for autoantibodies and inflammatory markers. So the important thing is right here. It's vasoconstriction of digital arteries in response to cold. Okay. Uh, so it could be primary or secondary. And primary, the etiology is. Idiopathic response to cold or stress. Uh, risk factor include CBD, smoking. Okay. Uh, okay, so CBD, smoking, and cold or stress. Uh, clinical presentation, young predominantly female. Symmetric attacks, 
and normal examination and lab results management here is non-pharmacologic warming techniques smoking cessation stress reduction and medication is uh, ccb first line pde uh, five inhibitor second line okay. uh, secondary vasoconstriction due to vascular uh, pathology causes are autoimmune disease like systemic sclerosis drugs uh, for example amphetamines and trauma for example frostbites um, clinical presentation here is uh, older more than 40 male and female asymmetric attacks uh, examination lab results tissue injury digital ulcers abnormal nail, nail folds uh, capillaries and autoimmune antibodies so here the important one is right here digital ulcers if you start seeing digital ulcers along with three knots you got to do other um you got to go look for what's causing the underlying like what the under uh, underlying cause is right so it's going to be autoimmune disease most probably systemic sclerosis uh, so look for that um so you do tests for that right so systemic sclerosis ena is the one you do um and management evaluate and treat underlying disorder same medications as for primary rp consider aspirin if increased risk of for digital ulceration okay acute low back pain okay um where qid uh video of um okay so the qid is there for because uh, there's a video of straight leg raise test um, so slr test is sensitive for herniated disc however abnormal findings can also be seen in uncomplicated cases as well uh, so next best step for someone who has positive uh, we give NSAIDs and acetaminophen which is the preferred first line we don't do mri even if slr is positive but all the other examination findings are negative since MRI rarely changes the first line treatment, we still give NSAIDs even if it's positive finding there. Um, activity modification is good, but moderate physical activity should be maintained. Osteoarthritis, uh, modifiable and non-modifiable. Modifiable are sedentary uh, lifestyle, obesity, occupational joint loading, and diabetes mellitus. And then there's non-modifiable, which is advanced age, fem uh, female sex, family history, abnormal joint alignment, and prior joint trauma. Okay, so question was, which of the following is most significant contributor to patient's knee pain? Uh, these were the options. Alcohol use, physical inactivity, inactivity, poor glucose control, prior trauma, or vitamin D deficiency. It was prior trauma joint uh joint trauma right so it's one of these okay um now uh, all the other ones are modifiable okay so the most significant contributor was joint trauma um okay uh lateral epicondylitis uh, tennis elbow is painful non-inflammatory uh, angiofibroblastic tendinosis at the common in extensor origin caused by repetitive forceful wrist extension examination reveals tenderness at the lateral epicondyle and pain with passive flexion or resisted extension at the wrist all right so again lateral epicondylitis um it is painful non-inflammatory angiofibroblastic tendinosis at the common extensor origin caused by repetitive forceful wrist extension uh, examination reveals tenderness at the lateral epicondyle and pain with passive flexion or resisted extension of the wrist okay. osteoporosis uh, risk factors these are non-modifiable and these are modifiable non-modifiable are advanced age postmenopausal, low body weight white or asian malabsorption uh, disorder hypercortisolism 
hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, inflammatory disorder, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic liver or kidney disease. Modifiable one are smoking, excessive alcohol intake, sedentary lifestyle, medications, for example, glucocorticoid anticonvulsants, uh, vitamin D deficiency, inadequate calcium intake, estrogen deficiency, for example, premature menopause, oophorectomy. Screening of for osteoporosis with dual energy x-ray absorptometry is recommended in all women aged more than 65 and for younger women with an equivalent risk of osteoporotic fracture. The XR result is reported as a T-score, which is the standard deviations above below the mean for a healthy young adult at a peak bone density. By convention, uh, osteoporosis is a T-score of uh, two point, negative 2.5 or less than that, whereas osteopenia is a T-score between negative 1 and negative 2.5. Uh, this is not really, it wasn't asked or anything, it's just I included it here. Um, but this is the main point right here, that you it's recommended for women above the age of 65 or anyone with a risk factor. Alright, so any of these risk factors. Uh, pain in hip. Sorry. Uh, just going over these again. Right. Um, pain in hip, SLE, and uh, take steroids. So, what's the next best step for the pain? Uh, MRI. Okay, because uh, they're taking steroid, it could be because of that, and um, and there's pain in hip. So, uh, you do MRI, AVN, due to steroid, avascular necrosis, etiology, steroid use is number one there, uh, alcohol abuse. SLE is also there for ABN. Antiphospholipid syndrome, hypo, uh, sorry, hemoglobin empathy, for example, sickle cell. Infection, for example, osteomyelitis, HIV. Uh, kidney transplantation, decompression uh, sickness. Um, clinical manifestations, groin pain on weight bearing. Okay, and pain on hip abduction and internal rotation, no erythema, swelling, or point tenderness. Lab findings, normal white blood cell count, normal ESR, and CRP. Radiologic imaging, uh, cres crescent, uh, crescent sign seen in advanced stages. Uh, MRI is the most sensitive modality. Okay. Uh, you have normal white blood cell and normal ESR and CRP. Uh, this res rash seen on the left wrist, right arm, and leg. Okay, uh, so this is disseminated uh, gonococcal infection. Uh, what are the manifestations for these? It's going to be purulent monoarthritis, or it could be triad of tenosynovitis, dermatitis, migratory polyarthralgia. Okay. Diagnosis. Uh, diagnosis is um, detection of anisaria gonorrhea. Sorry, anisaria gonorrhea in urine, cervical or cervical or uh, urethral sample. Culture of blood, synovial fluid, less sensitive. Treatment here is third generation cephalosporine intravenously. Uh, diagnosis here is urogenital uh, swab for. Nucleic acid uh, amplification test, okay, or NAT test. Okay, uh, the main thing here is triad of these, uh, which is tenosynovitis, uh, dermatitis, and migratory polyarthralgia. Okay, uh, ENA is positive, and then NTU1 ribonucleoprotein AB is positive. This was from uh, step one, uh, FA, mixed connective tissue disease. Feature of SLE, uh, systemic sclerosis, and or polymyositis associated with NTU1 RNP antibodies, speckled ENA. Okay. 
So what is mixed connective tissue? Um, it is autoimmune disorder with variable features of SLE, systemic sclerosis, polymyositis, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, clinical features are going to be uh, Raynaud's phenomenon, uh, hand finger swelling, arthritis, synovitis, inflammatory myopathy, uh, pulmonary hypertension, Miller or Discord, oid uh, rash, mild CNS and or kidney disease. So like a feature of from like all of these basically, right? Uh, lab findings, NTU1 uh, ribonucleoprotein positive, ENA positive, RF positive, anti-cyclic citrinylated uh, peptide positive, elevated creatinine uh, kinase positive, anemia and cytopenia. Diagnostic criteria here. Okay, so these were the diagnostic criteria. Okay. Uh, patient has difficulty climbing stairs and raising, rising up from chair. No problem chewing food. Changes in bowel and bladder function. Morning stiffness or joint pain. Okay, so how do you diagnose it? Uh, muscle biopsy. Because it is uh, one of these. Okay, uh, so patient was climbing stairs. Uh, no problem chewing food. Changes in bladder or this okay but there's morning stiffness oh, okay so there's none of these no morning stiffness no joint pain for this or this muscle biopsy we do that for this uh polymyositis okay so uh we'll go over these anyways so Uh, distinguishing features of fibromyalgia, polymyositis, and polymyalgia rheumatica. Uh, fibromyalgia. Clinical feature is that it's going to be young to middle-aged women, chronic widespread pain, fatigue, uh, impaired concentration, tenderness at uh, trigger points, for example, mid-trapezius, costochondral junction. Uh, diagnosis here is three or more months of symptoms with widespread pain index or symptom severity score normal left studies okay so no crp or ck none of that right everything is normal here uh young to middle-aged women and pain uh two points uh polymyositis so this is proximal uh mu muscle weakness for example increasing difficulty climbing stairs uh, pain mild to absent uh, elevated muscle enzymes for example creatine kinase elderlies ast autoantibodies uh, anti jo1 ana biopsy uh, endomyceal infiltrate uh, patchy necrosis okay so this is uh again they said that in the vignette so increasing uh, difficulty climbing stairs. Uh, pain is mild or absent. Um, diagnosis is with elevated muscle enzymes, for example, CK, aldolase, or EST. Okay. Um, autoantibodies, antigo one ENA, and biopsy for, um, and you'll see endomyceal infiltrate and patchy necrosis. Okay. Uh, polymyalgia rheumatica. Age more than 50, systemic signs and symptoms, uh, stiffness more than, stiffness is more than a pain in shoulder, hip, girdle, or neck. Okay, so majority of the symptom is going to be about the stiffness, not the pain. Uh, association with giant cell temporal arthritis. Here you will have elevated ESR CRP, rapid improvement with glucocorticoid therapy. Patient with acute uh, lower back pain, acute, not cute. <laughs> uh, patient with acute lower back pain, tried ibuprofen but didn't work. What's the next best step? Uh, options were add a non-benzodiazepine, muscle relaxant, add an opioid analgesic, avoid, uh, advise strict bed rest, order an MRI of the lumbar spine or order an x-ray of the lumbar spine. Uh, here, uh, first line would have been NSAIDs, right? Because that's what we give. Uh, we talked about it over here. 
uh, for acute low back pain. It was NSAIDs, acetaminophen, pain. This is a fair, fair, fair slide. But this patient already tried that with ibuprofen and it did not work. So what's the second best? Add a non-benzodiazepine muscle relaxant. Okay. Uh, management of uh, acute non-specific back pain. So non-pharmacologic measures are maintain normal, moderate activity. Education, for example, activity and prognosis. And then consider heat massage, spinal manipulation, acupuncture. Okay. Uh, TENS unit maybe. Uh, first line medication here is NSAIDs, for example, naproxen or ibuprofen. Uh, consider acetaminophen. And then second line here is non-benzodiazepine muscle relaxant. For example, cyclobenzaprine and tizanidine. Okay. Uh, opioids, tramadol. Uh, not preferred, consider a uh, short course for severe uh, refractory pain. Okay. Uh, X-ray shows narrowing of joint space and osteophytes. Okay. Uh, joint fluid. Okay, so narrowing of joint space and osteophytes. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try this. Okay, so osteoarthritis. Uh, thickened uh, capsule. Uh, thin and fibrillated cartilage over here uh, osteophyte loose bone uh, loose bodies uh, subchondral sclerosis and subchondral bone cyst okay. um, joint capsule and synovial lining synovial cavity uh, cartilage and bone okay cool so we'll just do that for now uh, this is one uh, what is this called CMP right uh, CMC, sorry, CMC, carpal metacarpal joint, uh, and this is the first one, and you see how it's weird over there. Uh, physical examination is in osteoarthritis shows crepitus, periarticular bony enlargement, especially crepitus when it's in the knee joint, and well, when you try to flex it or extend it and move, keep moving it, you'll hear this crepitus there. Uh, it shows crepitus, uh, periarticular bony enlargement, and painful or decreased range of motion. X-ray findings include a narrowed joint space, osteophytes, and subchondral sclerosis cysts. Okay, so they'll find narrow joint spaces. Okay, so over there. See. Uh, osteophytes, we went over that over here, and subchondral sclerosis and cysts. That's also in the photo. You can look up at that. Patient can have also have a bland uh, synovial effusion, so no organism less than 2,000 white blood cells. Okay, um, so this one is known to include DIP, that's these joints, um, PIP, those are these ones, and then First is CMC, uh, this one over here, okay, but not the knuckles or MCP, metacarpal pharyngeal joints. History can have morning stiffness, but it's going to be less than 30 minutes. Okay, uh, so treatment for these are NSAIDs, topical diclofenac. Uh, oral can also work, but carries a greater risk for toxicity, which is peptic ulcer. Uh, osteoarthritis here. Uh, age of consent is more. Sorry, uh, onset is more than uh, forty. Prevalence increases with age. Joint involvement are knee, hip, DIP uh, joints, and first CMP, CMC joint. Okay. First metacarpal uh, metacarpal joint. Okay, and distal interphalangeal joints. Morning stiffness, non-brief, less than thirty. Systemic uh, symptoms are absent. Examination finding hard bony enlargement of joints, reduced range of motion with uh, crepitus. Okay, 
so reduce range of motion so that's the movement of your joint it will cause crepitus okay now management of osteoarthritis non-pharmacologic treatment exercise weight loss uh, symptoms persist even after that then you go to so this is the first line management uh, non-pharmacologic treatment which is exercise and weight loss uh, symptoms if they persist then it's topical or oral uh, NSAIDs as needed consider deloxetine or topical capsaicin okay uh, symptoms persist even after that then significant impairment or uh, significant impairment sorry uh, then you go for surgery if possible the knee replacement surgery i guess if it's in the knee um, or something else uh, common uh, sorry chronic pain management uh, okay so that's the non-surgical candidates that's where you go with the opioids and stuff i guess uh, osteoarthritis of the hands is primarily a clinical diagnosis imaging for example x-ray is less sensitive than examination findings and is usually unnecessary for diagnosis or management range of motion with crepitus okay um that's same as this so osteoarthritis of the hands is primarily a clinical diagnosis imaging for example x-ray is less sensitive than examination findings and is un usually unnecessary for diagnosis or management uh, right groin pain uh, reduced hip range of motion for uh, history of herniated disc uh, bmi is 34 degenerative joint disease okay right groin pain um okay right so the question was about right groin pain um and then there was reduced hip uh, range of motion uh, with history of herniated disc and bmo was 34 and this was degenerative joint disease which is osteoarthritis okay so disruption of bone vasculature what does that mean uh, this is osteonecrosis it is characterized by reduced perfusion of the femoral head and collapse of the periarticular bone just like uh, like osteoarthritis it can present with groin pain and reduced hip range of motion however most patients have nocturnal or rest pain and almost all have a history of glucocorticoid use okay so it's similar to avn um, sickle cell disease or um, heavy alcohol use diabetes is not a significant risk factor okay um, what was the risk factor for avn steroid alcohol yep and no dm over here so sickle cell as well so okay same thing uh cutaneous nerve compression uh, plus hip pain okay so that is like impingement or um own oh, cutaneous so that's like wearing the uh, belt really tight or tight clothing that's this one uh, so this is myalgia parasthetica it is a common it is caused by compression of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve at the waist it causes burning pain and paresthesia of the at the lateral thigh symptoms are unaffected by motion x-ray uh, calcification of the cartilaginous structures calcification of joint uh, cartilage this is chondrocalcinosis okay uh, and we'll cover this more in detail uh, further down but for now um, pseudogout this is uh, what you see calcification of cartilaginous structures okay and pseudogout its main uh, culprits it's a secondary thing right so what causes pseudogout you usually see it in what was it hyperparathyroidism or hypothyroidism or hemochromatosis i believe uh, we'll confirm that but 
Yeah, so calcification of joint cartilage, uh, chondrocalcinosis, is seen in calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition. Synovial fluid shows an inflammatory effusion with rhomboid positively bifringent crystals. Okay, and then if you have an extra finding that says it's a normal joint space but with soft tissue swelling, this is septic arthritis. If you have an x ray with periarticular osteopenia and joint margin erosion, then that is rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Joint margin erosion. That. The other one has sclerosis and cyst. Okay. Right. So osteoarthritis was thin and fibrillated cartilage. Uh, osteophytes, loose bodies, subchondral, uh, chondral sclerosis, and subchondral bone cyst. Okay, so normal joint capsule and synovial lining. Synovial cap uh, cavity is over there, and bone is here. Okay, so in rheumatoid arthritis, you have pannus. Okay, that is synovial proliferation, hypervascularity, dense inflammatory infiltrates. Um, yep, so hypervascularity, synovial proliferation, and dense inflammatory infiltrate. Uh, you have increase in synovial fluid, eroding cartilage, and bone erosion. So bone erosion over here, and eroding cartilage. Okay, um, okay so we'll cover that later. So RA, so here it was periarticular osteopenia. Okay, osteopenia, lack of bone, and joint margin erosion. So, makes sense? Yes. Uh, RA can cause a popliteal cyst formation. Okay, um, so remember that. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis can cause popliteal cyst formation. That's a cyst in, uh, in the popliteal fossa. Uh, but the synovial fluid in rheumatoid arthritis shows an inflammatory effusion in addition. It typically also involves the small, non-weight-bearing joints of the hands and is associated with systemic symptoms. For example, fever, fatigue, prolonged uh, versus brief, uh, morning stiffness. Uh, for example, more than 30 minutes of stiffness and sinusitis, warm and spongy joints. X-ray reveals a periarticular osteopenia and with erosions of the joint margin. Okay. Uh, again, we saw that bone, uh, bony erosion and uh, eroding cartilage over here. Okay. Uh, the areas that are involved are MCP. That's the knuckles and uh, PIP. So those are the those ones and the uh, wrist. Okay, but not DIP and not the CMC. Okay. So remember, wrist is involved as well. So if you have finding over the wrist, but none of these, it's still RA. Okay. So RA can lead to generalized bone loss can involve the wrist, so it elicits tingling upon tapping of the flexor surface of the wrist in the first three digit of each hand. Okay, so sort of like a uh, carpal tunnel, but with carpal tunnel, you will have a positive tunnel and felon sign, uh, sign test or whatever. Uh, however, when tapping on it, it won't cause anything. But um, in RA, it does. Okay. I guess in that as well, it would. I don't know. But I haven't seen this test done for carpal tunnel. It's only done for this. So but remember it this way. Uh, MCP and PIP swelling. Okay, so again, that's MCP and PIP. So RA so far. But rheumatoid factor is negative. So what's the next best step? You go for the more specific one. Remember, the specific one was anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody assay. And patients in whom RA is suspected but who have uh, a negative RF test result, anti-CCP testing should be obtained. Seronegative RA, uh, that is negative assays for 
RF and NTCCP. Okay, often carries a better prognosis. However, many patients who initially have zero negative disease will develop positive markers later in their course. RA is diagnosed primarily based on clinical findings. However, serology can help clarify the diagnosis. Okay. Um, so what are the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis? These are important to know. Okay. So systemic fever, weight loss, fatigue, pulmonary, fibrotic uh, lung disease. Okay. So you can get fibrotic lung disease from rheumatoid arthritis. Pleural effusion, lung nodules, and pulmonary hypertension. So we'll talk about both of these, I think, or not. No, that was systemic. Okay, no, they don't talk about this for this. Uh, cardiovascular, atherosclerosis, vasculitis, musculoskeletal, osteopenia, osteoporosis. Uh, dermatologic, rheumatoid nodules, hematologic, anemia, neuropsychiatric, uh, depression and neuropathy, others, Sjogren syndrome, Raynaud's phenomenon, and scleritis and episcleritis. Okay, so scleritis, episcleritis, Raynaud's, Sjogren can happen in rheumatoid arthritis. Cool. All right, uh, DMARDS, uh, methotrexate, it is a folate anti metabolite, adverse effect hepatotoxicity, stomatitis, cytopenias, luflonamide, this is a primidine synthase inhibitor, hepatotoxicity, cytopenias, hydroxychloroquine, uh, this is a TNF and interleukin-1 suppressor, uh, it causes, it can cause uh, retinopathy, okay, uh, sulfasalazine, uh, TNF and interleukin-1 suppressor, hepatotoxicity, stomatitis, uh, hemolytic anemia okay and tnf inhibitor uh, this is adalimumab uh, aldamab's intercept and infleximab okay uh, okay uh, we don't know how they work uh, well they work by inhibiting tnf okay <laughs> uh, adverse effect is infection uh, demyelination congestive heart failure and malignancy so majority of these are causing hepatotoxicity. The only one that stands out is hydroxychloroquine, which causes retinopathy. Okay, so if there's a patient given hydroxychloroquine, uh, what would you do uh, before and after prescribing it? Uh, you keep uh, doing eye examinations as follow-ups, okay? Uh, during follow-ups, okay. And... Uh, Sulfasalazine, it causes stomatitis, so remember that as an adverse effect. All the other ones, um, if they ask you what do you do, uh, next step is like in uh, methotrexate, it causes mouth ulcers. Uh, medication induced inhibition of DNA synthesis, so you give folic acid to mitigate the toxicity. It doesn't reduce its effect. Okay, so you give folic acid along with methotrexate. Uh, punched out erosions with a rim of cortical bone. Okay, so that's our x ray finding, and then they give you this picture. It looks like gout, right? Uh, Nettle shaped, uh, bifringent, negatively bifringent uh, crystals, right? Uh, so gout. Causes an inflammatory effusion and needle-shaped negatively bifringent crystals. Um, X-rays characteristically show punched-out erosions with a rim of cortical bone. Okay. Okay. So, X-ray characteristically show punched-out erosions with a rim of cortical bone. Both gout and pseudogout are characterized by recurrent flares of pain rather than chronic progressive pain. Okay, so it will come and then uh, it will go away for a couple of months or even a year and then it comes back. Okay, so recurrent flares of pain rather than chronic and progressive. And when it comes, it's within like three days, it's going to be like the max pain it can achieve. Uh, patient has muscle and joint pain for two months. 
and they went under a uh, uh, row and Y bypass surgery two years ago and then lab results are these so hematocrit was 34 which is low calcium was 8.2 which is low it's like 8.4 to 10.2 i think uh, create is normal albumin is normal but alp is high okay so patient has um, again muscle and joint pain for two months and they went through a bypass surgery and lab results so what's the next best step okay uh it's vitamin d deficiency in patients who have had rho and y gastric bypass surgery and other malabsorptive conditions okay so it's malabsorption it can lead to osteomalacia uh, presenting with diffuse musculoskeletal pain and an elevated alkaline phosphatase uh, level okay the other one for alp was Paget's disease, but here we have a reason why it can't be Paget's. So it's because of uh, all the other findings, like calcium is low. Right now, uh, if it was none of these, then it would have been Paget. I think we could have gone with that. Okay. Uh, I'm just basing that off the result and the pattern. Uh, the diagnosis is confirmed by measuring serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Uh, clinical feature of osteomalacia uh, causes malabsorption, intestinal bypass surgery, celiac disease, chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease, symptoms and signs, maybe asymptomatic bone pain and muscle weakness, muscle cramps, difficulty walking and waddling gait. Uh, diagnosis, increase in alkaline phosphatase, increase in PTH, decrease in serum calcium and phosphorus, decrease in urine calcium. Okay, so increase in this and pth um because there is a decrease in calcium yes and phosphorus too okay um because there is decrease in vitamin d okay so vitamin d and there's decrease in urinary calcium as well interesting and imaging will show cortical thinning and reduced bone density um, bilateral symmetric pseudofractures, loser's owns. Okay. Arthritis plus history of being around children, parents, daycare, uh, child daycare. Okay. Parent, child daycare. So arthritis plus history of being around children, always think viral arthritis when children are involved with and they have some kind of pain. Okay. Um, Think viral arthritis unless given clues to rule it out. So probably B19 infection. Sarcoidosis treatment is glucocorticoids. Uh, DMARTs, we already did it. So let's take that out. Okay. Um, what to check um, before giving methotrexate? Uh, you check liver aminotransferase levels because... Uh, this causes hepatotoxicity, right? <clears throat> Other than that, what does it cause? It causes cytopenias and stomatitis, okay? So, sulfazolazine and this, they both cause stomatitis and hepatotoxicity. And both of these cause cytopenias and this one causes hematolytic anemia, okay? All right, so basically, you just make sure when you're reading um the vignette or question stem look for what drugs they're taking and if it has any side effects that are uh, high yield right questions are probably going to be related to that uh, when ra is involved uh, liver amino transferase give it with folic acid to mitigate uh, toxicity uh, here the mcv will be more than 100 because of folic acid deficiency or not deficiency, but you know, yeah, um, it's just not, it's being blocked or used up. I forget. Uh, TNF inhibitor, what was it? Uh, anti metabolite, okay. TNF inhibitor. So, this one, before we do it, we did a TB check, right? So, you do INF gamma release assay for TB precaution. Okay, uh, 
before giving this, uh, we also do transthoracic echocardiography. We don't do it, but it is recommended for patients with ventricular dysfunction. Okay, so if they have some kind of ventricular myopathy, uh, cardiomyopathy, since DMARDs are associated with an increase of heart failure. Um, myotonic dystrophy, this is the one where the grip can't terminate the grip, CTG, right? It looks like Klinefelter's, okay? So narrow face, um, big ears, uh, long, long face, I guess, whatever that was uh, for Klinefelter's with uh, small testes. Uh, okay, so it looks like Klinefelter's karyotype. Uh, so you do karyotyping for this one for diagnosis. But they also have uh, muscle weakness and cardiac arrhythmias. So in myotonic dystrophy, these are like the add-ons from Klein filters. Muscle weakness and cardiac arrhythmias along with hypogonadism and narrow long face. So to diagnose, you do genetic testing. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, karyotyping is for Klein filters, not this. For this one, you do genetic testing. Uh, genetic testing does detects the presence of trinucleotide CTG repeat expansion in the DMPK gene confirms the diagnosis. Okay. Prevention of future gout attacks, weight loss to achieve BMI less than 25, low fat diet, um, this decreased seafood and red meat intake, protein intake preferably from vegetables and low fat dairy products, avoidance of organ rich foods like liver and sweet breads. Um, avoidance of beer and distilled spirits. And avoidance of diuretics when possible. Okay. Uh, GCA. Aortic aneurysms can occur in patients with giant cell temporal arthritis due to involvement of the branches of the aorta. So GCA, aortic aneurysm can occur in patients with GCA okay. due to involvement of the branches of the aorta. Okay. So a lot, of, a lot of these have um, vasculitis questions, um, which in FA it is given in immuno. But when I did the FA read for step two, um, the vasculitis is not involved in this chapter. It's actually so these ones were tough. So if you're going into this without doing immuno uh, in musculo, you might find it frustrating uh, if you don't remember immuno from step one. Uh, SLE. Uh, manifestation of SLE. Um, again, you already know all of these, but Clinical symptoms, uh, constitutional fever, fatigue, weight loss, symmetric uh, migratory arthritis, skin is uh, bilateral rash and photosensitivity, serositis, pleurisy, pericarditis, and peritonitis. So some of these you might not have known. So this covers all of these. So pleurisy can also happen in SLE. Okay? So that is like, a, remember the pericardial rub or whatever. If you hear a rub or something with position or something, it could be SLE now. Okay. Uh, pericarditis and peritonitis. Uh, thromboembolic event due to vasculitis and antiphospholipid antibodies. Neurologic cognitive dysfunction and seizures. Uh, lab findings, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenias and leukopenias. Hypocomplementopenia, sorry, uh, hypocomplementemia. C3 and C4, so it's going to be low C3 and low C4. Um, antibodies, ENA sensitive and anti double stranded DNA and anti Smith um, is specific. Uh, renal involvement is proteinuria and uh, elevated. Okay, yeah, right. So this is also important. Remember, proteinuria is seen in SLE. Okay, uh, it is part of the nephrotic syndrome, I think. Or nephritis. Yikes. I should not forgot that. And uh, elevated creatinine. Okay. Uh, 
let me make sure I'll be back. Yes, so um, SLE can cause membranous nephropathy. Um, that is part of nephrotic syndrome. But however, if there is hematuria involved here, it would be glomerulonephritis. Okay, so fatigue with patient with fatigue, uh, polyarticular arthritis, painless oral ulcer. Um, we didn't see that up there, but this one also causes oral ulcer. Uh, thrombocytopenias, glomerulonephritis, hematuria, and proteinuria, and African American women. Okay, so this is a case of SLE. Uh, systemic lupus erythematis is a multi system inflammatory disease that can present with central nervous system findings such as generalized tonic clonic seizure. CSF may be normal or reflect mild inflammation, slight elevation in CSF, leukocytes lymphocyte sources everything else may be negative okay so slight elevation in csf leukocytes and lymphocytosis okay um i believe this one is the one that causes yeah lymphocytes okay never mind okay uh everything else may be negative gram stain uh like that um, neck to chest test can be negative as well this will help point it towards SLE when it's negative instead of uh, you know meningitis or something uh, plus the melar rash will be present so that will also help you clue in that it's SLE okay uh, 75 year old with a severe uh, lower back pain after lifting turkey, uh, lifting turkey, okay. So a 75 year old was there in a store where she uh, was trying to lift a turkey and had immediately had a severe lower back pain. History, uh, she already has a history of uh, temporal arthritis from which she takes prednisone, okay. Um, Right, so since prednisone is a corticosteroid, we got to start thinking about, you know, osteoporosis, osteopenia, or fracture, and stuff like that um, with this. Um, so physical examination shows midline tenderness to palpation and percussion of the lumbar spine. So when you have midline tenderness, um, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's usually going to be something related to a fracture of the vertebrae okay now uh, due to palpation and percussion of the lumbar spine ankle jerk reflexes are absent bilaterally um, this leaves um, and knee reflexes are two plus okay and flexor plantar are normal slr test is 90 so that's a negative right uh, slr test is positive and it's it hurts uh, to lift it up past 60 degrees Yes, I think. Right, so VCF, that is vertebral compression fracture, is likely in elderly patients with steroid use. Etiology, trauma, often trivial. Osteoporosis, osteomalacia. Uh, bone metastasis, metabolic, for example, hyperparathyroidism and Paget's disease. Uh, clinical presentation in acute is going to be back pain and decreased spinal mobility pain increasing with standing walking and laying on back referred pain to abdomen and flank uh, spinal tenderness at affected level chronic gradual painless progressive kyphosis and loss of height uh, complications increased risk for fracture uh, future fractures, uh, hyperkyphosis, this is protuberant abdomen, early stage T, um, weight loss, and decreased respiratory capacity. So why differential diagnosis? Why is it not uh, herniated disc? A herniated disc would usually present with radicular pain radiating along the thigh to below the knee. Okay. Uh, here the knee reflex was normal. 
uh, two plus is normal, right? One plus is uh, hyporeflexia, uh, three plus is hyper, and four plus is like clonic, I think. Um, okay, so a herniated disc usually presents with radicular pain radiating along the thigh to below the knee, sciatica. Um, whoops, give me a sec. And yeah, so patients can have a positive SLR test due to nerve uh, root compression. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the main thing, to, uh, main takeaway uh, that it radiates along the thigh to below the knee. Whereas here they said it was lower back pain after lifting this, and PE was midline tenderness. Uh, in this and ankle jerks reflexes are absent here uh, plant knee reflexes were normal okay. why was it not lumbosacral strain because lumbosacral strain can occur after lifting a heavy object and the pain is often worse with ambulation however the pain and tenderness are typically in the paraspinal area okay so if this is your back and this is your spine it's going to be around that not on the spine whereas here you have tenderness on the midline, right? Okay, uh, so, however, the pain and tenderness are typically in the paraspinal area without significant midline tenderness. The patient's age and history of glucocorticoid use greatly increases the likelihood of VCF. Okay, uh, vertebral compression fracture. Uh, so, midline tenderness uh, plus prednisone and older patients. So, midline tenderness plus uh, prednisone use, and it's an older patient. That's why it's a good reason for picking VCF for vertebral compression fracture. Okay. Um, so, patient with a long history of ankylosing spondylitis plus uh, fell on his back. Okay, so this patient had this and... Uh, while getting into a car, they fell on their back, uh, and it, they had pain, right? So severe pain, uh, and upon physical examination, you find that there is midline vertebral tenderness. Now the pain is ten out of ten. Okay, so what happened? Is it disc herniation, referred visceral pain? Is it spinal metastasis, spondylitis flare-up? spondylolithiasis or vertebral fracture again um it's an older patient this was like the 75 year old should have added that um let me add that. 25 year old okay yeah so um why would we pick vertebral fracture? Uh, clue was sudden and severe pain. Okay. Uh, in disc herniation, we already talked about that. Uh, referred visceral pain. Um, that's mostly the pain going to the back would be uh, due to, I guess, pancreatitis or uh, aortic abdominal aneurysm, AAA. Uh, spinal metastasis, you have the shopping cart sign here. Uh, no, sorry, this is the benign uh, one, the prostate one. So PSA will be high, right? And it's gradual, insidious, and um, it's not going to be sudden and severe, okay? Spondylitis flare-up, again, it's not going to be sudden and severe. Spondylolithiasis, um, yes, that could be, but... Um, let me just... Yes, right now. Um, this is I believe this is the one where it slides uh outwards. You're not gonna have sudden and severe pain because this this is also gonna be burning type of pain, uh radiating type of pain. Okay. Uh right ankle pain after uh, training for a marathon and running for six months. Okay, so ankle pain. Um, usually you might want to pick like um, 
you know plantar fasciitis but plantar fasciitis happens in the plantar surface of the foot right um and plantar fasciitis happen uh, the reason it happens is because of overtraining uh after a long period of inactivity okay and achilles tendinopathy so that's what this is uh, the ankle pain it's on the posterior aspect of the uh, heel okay so achilles tendinopathy treatment here is eccentric calf strengthening exercise so this is what i noticed um, most of these uh, i came into this thinking that braces are used for a lot of these things but apparently it's not recommended so don't take braces um and they just straight out roast braces <laughs> so um what they recommend is do some kind of activity don't just sit around um uh, and doing that will help it recover much faster uh according to research okay so all of these are going to be either do some kind of activity or um uh, manage it with pain so you can do the activity to recover okay make sense hopefully so eccentric calf uh, strengthening exercise okay so achilles tendinopathy this is this is progressive uh, overload type thing okay uh tendinopathy uh risk factors here are athletic activity increase so this is similar to that um uh, Enthesitis, right? But enthesitis is again with something else. Um, it's characterized or like okay, this is turning into a podcast. Let's just go back to this. <laughs> uh, Achilles tendinopathy, uh, risk factor, athletic activity, increase in activity, uh, systemic disorder, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis. Medication here you're gonna provide is either glucocorticoid or fluoroquinolones. Uh, clinical features are gonna be swelling, warmth, uh, pain at posterior heel. Uh, tendon rupture is popping sensation and acute pain following rapid acceleration direction change. Okay. Um, I, if you have seen some kind of YouTube videos on these, it's it's very vivid and horrible. Uh, examination findings. Uh, swelling, tenderness, 2 to 6 centimeter. Uh, proxima, sorry, I'm just running that video in my head now about the popping tendon rupture. Oof. Okay. Uh, examining finding. Swelling, tenderness, 2 to six centimeter proximal to the tendon insertion so proximal, okay uh rupture it's going to have a positive thompson test so what is that it's with the patient prone and feet off the end of the table squeeze the calf muscle the absence of plantar flexion indicates tendon rupture okay i would imagine the screaming and pain would also indicate it but okay uh, diagnosis, clinical findings, uh, ultrasound, swelling, and neovascularization, and MRI. Uh, management here, acute, activity modification, ice, and NSAIDs. Chronic eccentric resistance exercise. Okay, so this one, um, it was probably chronic in the vignette. Uh, otherwise, activity modification, ice, and NSAIDs. Uh, water break. Okay, so remember how SLE also causes hypertension and interstitial lung disease? Not interstitial lung disease, sorry. It was some kind of lung disease, but they didn't explain what it was, right? So we see and all this, okay. Was it this one down here? Was it something else? Okay. 
rheumatoid arthritis. Sorry, I was thinking of rheumatoid arthritis. So pulmonary hypertension and fibrotic lung disease. Okay, so this is from rheumatoid arthritis. Similarly, uh, SS also causes that. Okay, pulmonary involvement and systemic sclerosis. Okay, so uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension or interstitial lung disease. Okay. Okay. Um, so pH uh, and interstitial lung disease, clinical presentation, dyspnea, exertional syncope, and clear lungs. In pulmonary arterial hypertension, uh, you're going to see dyspnea, exertional syncope, and syncope, and clear lungs. Uh, the pulmonary function test is going to be uh, normal FEV1 and FVC and normal FEV1 FVC ratio. Um, however, there's going to be decreased DLCO. Okay, um, it, so it's kind of like uh, restrictive pattern, I guess. No, that one has increased ones, right? So not restrictive, but just the DLCO is going to be decreased. Okay, and interstitial lung disease, you will have dyspnea. You will also have cough and Velcro-like crackles. Uh, this is an important finding, the Velcro-like crackles. Uh, restrictive pattern on PFP, okay, and with a decrease in DLCO. Uh, so pulmonary involvement in system sclerosis has two major manifestations lumen narrowing of the pulmonary arteries Okay, so lumen narrowing of the pulmonary arteries because remember when you have hypertension the medial layer uh, pushes back because it's the muscular one and then it causes um, narrowing of the artery okay so that's what's happening here a pulmonary arterial hypertension is the pulmonary expression of widespread vasculopathy. It is more common with limited systemic sclerosis. Okay, so this one you have to remember pH with limited systemic sclerosis. That's the one where you have Crest syndrome, but not on the trunk, body, or any other organs uh, other than this. Okay, so. Um, by that I mean fibrosis and all that stuff when you have fibrosis or thinning of the skin or on the body or stuff like that that is more of the diffuse type thing okay so in limited you only have hypertension uh, share so also known as Crest syndrome sharing similar pathophysiology with digital ischemia and renal crisis okay uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension is a major complication of systemic sclerosis and should be suspected with signs of right-sided heart failure and a vascular pattern on uh, pulmonary function test that is isolated reduced dlco despite normal mechanics okay so everything is coming out straight but dlco is decreased so that should clue you into this as well okay And then there's the second one, uh, fibrosis of the lung basement membrane, interstitial lung disease, ILD, it results from alveolar basement membrane inflammation and fibrosis. It is more common with diffuse SS, which causes more extensive visceral organ scarring. You will see restrictive pattern on PFP. Okay, um, next, dyspnea yeah. plus non-productive cough, Raynaud's uh, thick and firm, skin over face hands arms trunk and scattered crackles on lung auscultation so that is velcro like crackles right so velcro like crackles this is interstitial lung disease so if it's interstitial lung disease with uh, all of these but trunk involvement as well all of these things add up to uh, diffuse systemic sclerosis right uh, before starting hydroxychloroquine, uh, what evaluation should be done periodically? If you remember from before, I'm hiding the answer in case you didn't see it. Um, remember the odd one out, right? The retinopathy. So what evaluation should you be doing periodically? 
examination, remember this one is the one that stands out. Hydroxychloroquine is given, so let not put three. Okay, uh, all the other ones are hypotoxicity and stomatitis and cytopenias. Okay, sulfazeline causes hypotoxicity as well. Sulfazelazine, sorry, yes. Uh, acid skiff pass positive, and this is plus joint pain, you already know that. Pass the whip and cream, so has the whip, right? So Whipple's disease, it was in GI. Um, this one also causes uh, arthralgia, sorry, this one, right? So joint pain. So this one causes joint pain, remember. Um, pleural effusion. It was exudative, uh, chest pain, and pain while walking in the morning and is unable to bend her fingers to hold a coffee. The DD of sarcoid and SS was pointed out that it is clear. So they probably gave that. Um, it was bilateral patchy infiltrate in the lungs or lung findings were not seen. And for systemic sclerosis, they probably gave one of the markers. It was negative for and the anti isomerase or SLC 70 or whatever. Or ANA, sorry, ANA, they probably said that was clear. Okay. Um, so this is clearly rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, exudative and transudative pleural effusion. If you remember, uh, what makes exudative and transudative? You had to figure it out. Um, they didn't tell you that it was exudative, so we had to figure that out over there. Okay, uh, so once you figure it out, and under exudative, the common causes, you'll see rheumatologic disease is RA and SLE. Right? So they gave you ANA was negative, so SLE was out, so that leaves with RA. Uh, other causes are infection, malignancy, PE, pancreatitis, and post-CABG. CABG is coronary artery bypass grafting. Didn't know about that one. Okay. Transdative is exudative criteria not met, change in hydrostatic or oncotic pressure, heart failure, cirrhosis, hepatic hydrothorax, nephrotic syndrome, constrictive, constrictive pericarditis. Okay. Uh, morning joint pain uh, lasting for month, uh, sorry, for hours. Okay, so more than 30 minutes or more. Uh, stiffness in the small joints of the hand. Okay. And NSAIDs don't help anymore. So, this all uh, goes to like rheumatic arthritis or stuff like that, osteoarthritis, right? Uh, not osteoarthritis, sorry. Uh, it's more than 30, so rheumatoid arthritis. But then you see this. They give you the photo as well. Okay. They didn't give you this one, they give you one without the labels. Um, and then you see the nails. The nails are yellow and weird looking. Uh, that is fungal growth. Okay. Um, so this is what will tell you that it is arthritis. However, it is the psoriatic uh, arthritis. Okay. So clinical features of psoriatic arthritis is arthritis, soft tissue and nail involvement, and skin lesion. With the arthritis, it's going to affect peripheral and axial skeleton. Uh, causes prolonged, more than 30 minutes, uh, morning stiffness. Varied pattern. This is oligoarthritis or symmetric polyarthritis or spondyloarthritis or sacroiliitis or distal arthritis or uh, involving the DIP joint. Okay. Uh, severe and deforming uh, disease possible. Uh, for example, arthritis mutilence okay soft tissue and skin involvement again all of this they give it but you don't have to worry about remembering all that as long as you can figure it out from all of this that it's psoriatic arthritis also um, the other options you can cancel out most of them and you will only end up being confused between the two and those two are going to be the ones you're going to flip a coin between if you're not sure uh, so knowing this would help you differentiate between those two but however 
even rereading the question will also help you get through those questions okay so soft tissue and nail involvement back to this Antisit, uh is an inflammation at the tendon insertion site dactylitis uh, sausage digits of uh, toe or finger uh, nail pitting and onkylosis and pitting edema of the hand or feet skin lesion typically precedes onset of arthritis may also occur with or other or after onset of arthritis next best step perform a comprehensive skin examination okay um so this is the best next step um you gotta go do this because you might find other places where there's psoriasis and you have to make sure you find that so that will help you confirm the diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis uh, cyclophosphamide uh, what are the adverse effects for these uh, you probably already remember that uh, right acute hemorrhagic cystitis and bladder carcinoma okay and we give mesna for this remember from step one uh, new gyms fitness enthusiasts so they probably just started and they're overworking themselves elbow pain and unilateral okay so they have elbow pain in the right arm no other findings like swelling warm or redness what's the next best step again don't go with elbow brace or something like that right uh, you want activity uh, so elbow protection and NSAIDs okay. um, this is olecranon bursitis if there was other findings like warmth and all then that suggests index or inflammation index infection sorry it's probably meant to say infection um, infection or inflammation it warrants bursal fluid aspiration okay um yeah so that's when you would do that that would be the next best step for if, th if those findings were there however uh, it's just this and we know that they're started doing some kind of activity then it is this that we go with okay you have uh, long-term rheumatoid arthritis history uh, red painful knee uh, more than previous visit okay uh, temperature is 101.7 this all sounds like septic arthritis right because there's a long RA history um, so that's there to confuse you however it is red painful knee uh, and you don't have those in RA right and you may have it in gout but the temperature is 101.7 all of this basically points towards this also with gout you would have a previous history or something like they eat a lot of something like alcohol, red meat, seafood. Right? So after uh, diagnosis of uh, what is indicated, antibiotics, because it's septic arthritis. So antibiotic and joint drainage. Uh, so any one of these things that they give. Normally you start the antibiotics and then do the joint. Okay. So here we have um, risk factors, which is advanced age joint abnormalities uh, oara prostatitis or trauma immunocompromised for example diabetes mellitus bacteremia for example intravenous drug use all of these can cause septic arthritis okay uh, clinical features hot swollen joint with decreased range of motion uh, fever increase in esr and crp diagnosis synovial fluid analysis leukocytosis for example uh, for more than uh, 50,000 okay that's a good clue uh, if you have leukocytosis more than that if you have a lower amount of leukocytosis without the painful knee and all that stuff it's going to probably be RE or something else gout maybe I don't know because um, I believe they do have uh, presence of leukocytosis um, Sorry, not leukocytes, uh, WECs, but it's not this many. 
Uh, gram stain sensitivity is around 30% to 50% in culture blood. Culture initial treatment is intravenous antibiotics, joint irrigation and drainage, for example, arthroscopy and open arthrotomy. Okay. Neuromuscular paraneoplastic syndrome, um, myasthenia gravis, involved site, acetylcholine uh, receptor in postsynaptic membrane. Clinical features are fluctuating muscle weakness, ocular ptosis, diplopia, bulbar dysphagia, dysarthria, facial neck and limb muscles, lumbar eaton uh, syndrome, presynaptic membrane, voltage-gated calcium channels, proximal muscle weakness, autonomic dysfunction, for example, dry mouth, uh, cervical, uh, sorry, cranial nerve involvement, for example, ptosis, diminished or absent deep tendon reflexes, Okay, and uh, dermatomyositis and polymyositis, uh, muscle fiber injury. Uh, clinical features here are symmetric and more proximal muscle weakness, interleukin, uh, sorry, interstitial lung disease, strain out phenomenon, polyarthritis, dysphagia, skin findings, for example, gluten papules, uh, heliotrope rash, and dermatomyositis. Okay, so dermatomyositis causes interleukin, again, interstitial lung disease. So you may see a an ill-defined mass in right lower lobe okay so all of this was because of that so again interstitial lung disease it's also caused by dermatomyositis along with which ones ra and uh, ss all right so far uh, dermatomyositis are associated with other than this, it's malignancy. Okay. So that is new. Remember that. Uh, dermatomyositis, it's for malignancy. It's probably there for in step one, but I didn't remember that. The most common malignancies are adenocarcinomas. And then I, it hit me after I read the explanation, obviously. <laughs> um, it's never before. Uh, for example, ovarian, lung, pancreatic stomach and colorectal cancers okay so malignancy uh, gca with uh, rheumatica okay. uh, medial knee and pest and soreness uh, let's take a break here all right so this is a diagram for medial knee and pest and serenus and serenus okay so you have all of these muscle groups, uh, quadriceps and stuff. And here we have uh, patella right there. Okay, so this is the lateral side. Okay, because there's the tibia. Okay, and here on the tibia. Um, so this would be the knee joint. And right below the knee is on the medial side. We have this anserinia. Uh, bur uh, bursa and it's covered by all these tendons right semitendinous uh, tendon gracilis tendon and sartorius tendon okay um so all of these make pes and serenus okay so pes and serenus bursitis presents as a swelling over the upper medial tibial region it is typically caused by overuse and poor knee mechanics. Uh, treatment includes quadriceps and hamstring strengthening exercises to optimize strength, flexibility, and stability of the knee. Optimize strength, flexibility, and stability of the knee. So it happens because of poor knee mechanics and overuse. Okay, uh, treatment includes quadriceps and hamstring strengthening exercise. Again, they always want you to exercise and stuff, okay, to recover. The anserine bursa is located over the medial tibial condyle distal to the joint line, okay, um, and deep to the pes anserinus tendon complex. Okay, so deep into this. 
uh, so this is how they explain it if they're asking about this tenderness over the medial tibial uh, area okay. herniated disc also called slipped or ruptured disc uh, disc between vertebra bulges or open or breaks open uh, pressing on the nerves uh, often due to wear and tear lifting heavy objects and sudden movements can happen at any age symptoms vary depending on location and severity back pain that may radiate to legs or arms uh, and numbness tingling weakness in affected area diagnosis uh, physical examination uh, imaging tests like mri or ct scan right physical examination slr test most important um, and then the reflexes uh, treatment depends on severity um, mild cases rest pain medication uh, physical therapy severe cases surgery to remove or repair discs lumbar spinal stenosis narrowing of spinal canal pinching nerves mainly due to arthritis causing bony growths uh, thickened ligaments and bulging discs common in people over 60 symptoms back pain spreading to thighs symptoms are uh, posture dependent neurogenic versus exertion dependent vascular extension of the lumbar spine for example standing a uh, walking upright versus symptoms okay um, okay so there are two types of uh, lumbar stenosis one is neurogenic one is exertion or vascular type okay um, they talk about both over here but anyways um, so extension of the lumbar spine and standing up walking upright worsens symptoms uh, lumbar flexing flexion uh, for example walking uphill or leaning on a cane relieves pain and uh, pain onset with walking termed neurogenic claudication resembling vascular claudication okay so neurogenic claudication pain relieved by walking while leaning forward shopping cart sign uh, vascular claudication pain worsens with exertion relieved by stress uh, diagnosis mri scan treatment start with the uh, with exercises and physical therapy some exercises include uh, walking uphill or leaning on a cane to relieve uh, pain while others like cycling do not incite symptoms surgery sometimes necessary okay. 78 year old man progressive bilateral buttock pain that radiated to his thighs and calves okay the pain is worse with emulation but improves with leaning on a cane or say sitting right so that's classic uh, spinal stenosis uh, history of CAD and stent as well so what is the diagnosis uh, aortic iliac atherosclerosis no uh, diabetic neuropathy no malignant spinal cord compression no uh, osteoarthritis of the spine maybe uh, seronegative spinaloarthropathy um, seronegative okay so it's negative for all the markers okay um vertebral compression fracture okay and vertebral metastasis okay so answer was this osteoarthritis of the spine okay um all right so neurogenic and vascular claudication neurogenic uh, claudication pseudoclaudication okay so symptoms are again uh it's posture dependent pain okay uh lumbar extension worsens it uh worsens the pain so for example walking downhill okay. um limb fle lumbar flexion uh relieves pain okay. so walking while bent forward lower extremity numbness and tingling lower extremity weakness low back pain all of these stuff are the symptoms okay examination normal pulses Frequently normal examination, diagnosis, MRI of the spine. So this is the exercise one. Uh, vascular claudication. So symptoms are exertionally dependent pain. Pain relieved with rest, but not with bending forward while walking. 
lower extremity uh, cramping tightness no significant lower extremity weakness possible buttock thigh calf and foot pain okay okay so relieve the press but not without bending forward okay uh, examination decreased pulses cool extremities uh, decreased hair growth, paler with leg elevation, and diagnoses are ankle brachial index. Lumbar spinal stenosis is most commonly caused by degenerative changes in the spine and presents with low back pain and leg pain. Uh, low back and leg pain. The leg pain of neurogenic claudication is position dependent, exacerbated by lumbar extension, and persists even when while uh, standing still. Vascular claudication is exertion dependent and revolves, resolves with standing still. Okay, resolves with standing still. Cool. Uh, Morton uh, neuroma. Okay. So what is that? Uh, this was the minute pain in the right forefoot with a gradual onset, exacerbated over the past week. Okay, so pain in the right forefoot uh, with a gradual onset exacerbated over the past week. No history of trauma or inciting event. Pain interferes with regular exercise regimen like running and hiking. Physical examination reveals a clicking sensation when the third and fourth metatarsals heads are squeezed together, accompanied by burning pain over the plantar surface of the foot. Remaining examination is unremarkable. So this is the classic presentation of Morton neuroma. Okay, so sensation when the third and fourth metatarsal heads are squeezed together. It makes of uh, it's burning. Uh, it makes a clicking sound. Sorry. Um, or clicking sensation. Okay. So clicking crepitus sound is Mulder sign. That's what that is called. Mulder sign. Overview of running injuries of the fourth of the foot and ankle. So here we have Morton neuroma. This is numbness or pain between the third and fourth toe. Clicking sensation when palpating space between third and fourth toes while squeezing the metatarsal joints. Okay. And we have stress fracture. We'll just go through all of these. Uh, insidious onset. Focal pain in navicular or metatarsals, uh, wrist factor, abrupt increase in intensity of training, poor running mechanics, and female with eating disorder. Plantar fasciitis, plantar surface of the heel, uh, worse when initiating running or first steps of the day. Okay, uh, Achilles tendinopathy. Uh, burning pain or stiffness 2 to 6 cm above the posterior calcaneus. And then tarsal tunnel syndrome. This is compression of the tibial nerve at the ankle. Burning numbness and aching of the distal plantar surface of the foot toe. Okay. So treatment here for Morton neuroma. Metatarsal support with a bar or padded shoes insert to decrease pressure on the metatarsal head. And if that fails, then surgery. Uh, differential diagnosis for metatarsal stress fracture. Um, this, again, that is insidious onset, focal pain in navicular, and this. Uh, risk factor, abrupt increase in intensity of training, poor running mechanics, and female with eating disorder usually happens too. Okay. Uh, so metatarsal stress, stress fracture. Are typically seen following an abrupt increase in a high impact in activity on hard surfaces. Patients have sharp localized pain that is reproduced by pressure along the long axis of the bone. Axial loading. The female athlete triad uh, excessive exercise associated with oligomenorrhea, uh, inadequate nutritional intake, and osteopenia and osteoporosis is a significant risk factor for stress fracture, but this patient has normal BMI and no menstrual irregularities. Lateral epicondylitis, the elbow one again, treatment here is activity modification and counter uh, bracing and strap. Okay, so counter bracing and strap, here
here we do use brace again. Uh, first thing was activity modification. Okay. And it was, I believe, and seats up there. And it's painful and this is cost for that. Examination terminals. Has collection or okay, we didn't have it. Got it. So activity modification and counter bracing our strap. Okay. Middle-aged woman, uh, widespread uh, spread pain, fatigue, plus mood cognitive disturbances. What is the treatment? So it's middle-aged with widespread pain uh, and mood cognitive disturbances like fibro fog probably. So treatment is fibromyalgia. Um, it is fibromyalgia. Treatment for that is initially you ask them to do um, you know exercise and uh, all the non-medical medication management and then you go to um, antidepressants and duloxetine okay so initial management patients education about uh, fibromyalgia regular aerobic exercise and good sleep hygiene if this doesn't work then uh, tcas and duloxetine okay polymyalgia rheumatica clinical features rapid onset pain and stiffness in shoulder and hips with or without neck involvement, okay. Uh, fatigue, weight loss, uh, low grade fever, um, approximately 10% associated with GCA. Uh, here you have, if you have GCA, it would be headache, jaw, claudication, and visual symptoms. Diagnostic testing, elevated active, uh, uh, sorry, elevated acute phase markers like ESR and CRP, uh, temporal artery biopsy if symptoms of GCA treatment is very rapid response to oral glucocorticoids. Uh, so tingling and loss of sensation in lateral right thigh, BMI was 37. So if it's this much uh, BMI, uh, you would think that they're using either really tight belt uh, or you know something that's inhibiting their, it's compressing their uh, lateral cutaneous femoral nerve. Uh, this is called Myralgia parasthetica. Uh, next best step uh, here is treat uh, treatment, uh, reassurance, and conservative therapy and avoidance of tight garment. Uh, physical therapy is for sciatica, so you don't ask them to do physical therapy or anything here. Okay. Uh, Sudogal. What's it associated with? Uh, conjunctivitis, forbidden uh, nodes. Um, meniscal calcification, uh, rheumatoid factor, Kofi, or transient bacteremia. If you remember, I told you pseudogout, uh, three things cause it, right? Uh, one was, what was it? Um, oh, it's probably here. Yeah, hyperparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, and hemochromatosis, right? Um, so when you have calcitosis, um, remember we have chondrocalcinosis that is actually meniscal calcification um, so meniscal calcification is also a type of or it is uh, chondrocalcinosis okay so that's what that looks like over there calcification of the articular cartilage okay now uh, treatment here is intra-articular glucocorticoids NSAIDs uh, colchicine Carbidin nodes seen in osteoarthritis and tophi in gout. Okay, uh, that's just for the DD. Uh, Pseudogout should be evaluated for secondary causes such as hyperparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, and hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis, recent. Uh, okay, so this one goes into this. Uh, Recent diagnosis of diabetes and hematomegaly, right? Hematogrammatosis, this is uh, overload of iron um, in pancreas, 
would cause diabetes and in liver it would cause hepatomegaly and the fate of liver in this case would have been uh, carcinoma, right? HCC. If not, not done something about it like phlebotomy or yeah. Uh, next best step here is uh, for hemochromatosis uh, or even in this case uh, uh, if you have pseudo gout what would you do right if they give you a case of chondrocalcinosis and then they're asking you what's the next best step um, next best step is to look for underlying stuff if they give you TSH as normal so you don't have to worry about that if they give you that um, calcium is increased but PTH is normal, um, then you don't need to worry about that. Then you have to worry about this, right? Um, why is calcium increased? It's because that's what CC, uh, CPPD is made up of, right? Okay, so serum iron studies. This is because iron deposits in joints promote CPPD. That's calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystal deposition, pseudogout, the rhomboid ones. Uh, clinical manifestation of hereditary hemochromatosis. On skin, it's hyperpigmentation. It's known as bronze diabetes, um, musculoskeletal, um, arthralgia, arthropathy, and chondrocalcinosis. That's again, uh, meniscal calcification. Okay, and that's over here. Uh, gastrointestinal, elevated hepatic enzymes with hepatomegaly early, cirrhosis later, and increased. Uh, risk of hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, endocrine, uh, diabetes mellitus, secondary hypogonadism, and hypothyroidism. Cardiac, restrictive or dilated cardiomyopathy and conduction abnormalities. Infections, uh, increased susceptibility to listeria, vibrio vulnificus, and leucernia enterocolitis. Hyperparathyroidism with chronic hypercalcemia uh, can cause pseudogout uh, and it presents as acute painful monoarthritis. Okay. So, hyperparathyroidism. Sorry, I said PTH is normal, but then it would be just normal parathyroid hormone. So, hyperparathyroid increase of this, and even though you have increase in calcium. Uh, it's because calcium is not reaching the rest of the body. It's going into the joints, I guess. Way to remember about it. So painful monoarthritis. Cool. 33-year-old uh, woman with uh, chief complaint of pain in her ankle with uh, no STDs, uh, multiple tender pink to red nodules below the knee. Are seen in this picture no other findings okay next best step anti-nuclear antibodies biopsy of skin lesions chest x-ray colonoscopy and random biopsies CT scan of the abdomen HIV testing and urethro and rectal swabs okay. um, so what's the next best step for this Right, we have anti-nuclear antibodies, biopsy of skin lesion, chest x-rays, uh, colonoscopy of random biopsy, chest x CT scan of the abdomen, HIV testing, and uterus as well. Okay, so no STDs, we can cross that out. HIV testing, we can cross it out. Um, CT scan of the abdomen, um, there's nothing to do with that. Okay, colonoscopy of random biopsy. Um, no uh, reason for that either. Chest x-ray, again, <laughs> um, I don't see a reason for that even though that's the answer. Biopsy of skin lesion, maybe an anti-nuclear antibodies ANA. Okay, so probably one of those or, so why do we do chest x-ray? This is erythematous, uh, erythema nodosum. Okay, that's why. Okay, cool. Uh, erythema nodosum is thought to re represent a delayed hypersensitivity reaction. So, 
it is multiple even though this is just single one that you see here if you had seen multiple ones you would have a better idea of what it is okay um, yen is thought to represent a delayed hypersensitivity reaction to antigens associated with various conditions and is often related relatively benign with self-resolution in several weeks however EN can be an early sign of more serious disease and identification of the cause may prevent morbidity. Disease associated with EN include streptococcal infection, sarcoidosis, TB, endemic fungal infection like histoplasmosis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and Behet syndrome. Okay, or Behet syndrome. Um, okay. So, out of these, uh, we can't do, uh, there's no gram staining here, right? So, streptococcal is out. Uh, so, with chest x-ray, we can cover this, this, this. For IBD, there's really no other one than this, the key scan of the abdomen. But we don't have any... Uh, symptoms of it and the chief complaint right so we can ignore these remember this one was with the oral ulcer and it presents similar to rheumatoid arthritis otherwise uh, it's a vasculitis i believe large or medium i haven't done immuno yet so i don't remember this i'm not fresh on it basically um even in the absence of respiratory symptoms on uh, chest x-ray should be performed in patients with en to assess for finding consistent with sarcoidosis okay so even in absence of respi symptoms chest x-ray should be performed in this okay so why not perform ct scan of the abdomen to oh yeah but no symptoms for that okay but in absence of symptoms for this Okay. I'm not going to confuse myself. Let's move on. Um, Paget's treatment is bisphosphonate. Okay. And Paget disease of the bone. Uh, left lumbar paraspinal pain due to work. Plus history of pain for three months. So it's chronic almost. Uh, worse during end of work. And better with overnight rest. Okay. So this pain uh, gets better with rest. And worse during work. Okay, so next best step is it lumbar support brace or exercise therapy, right? So we don't do brace, we always go for exercise uh, for lower back pain, uh, exercise therapy. Physical therapy uh, emphasizes stretching and strengthening of the back muscle. Brace is not recommended um, because it weakens the uh, supportive muscles as well. Uh, patient with swollen and deformed hand joints okay uh, raised ESR okay so probably something with uh, spondylitis type stuff or arthritis okay leukopenia neutropenia and splenomegaly so when you have neutropenia and splenomegaly you need to know about Felty syndrome and what is Felty syndrome? That is neutropenia along with splenomegaly and rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we have rheumatoid arthritis with ESR, and we have neutropenia and splenomegaly in this patient. So diagnosis can be confirmed by anti-sertraline peptide antibody. So Felty syndrome. Uh, clinical features, rheumatoid arthritis, severe erosive joint disease and deformity, rheumatoid nodules, uh, vasculitis, mononeuritis, multiplex, necrotizing skin lesions, neutropenia, ANC less than 2000 microliter, uh, and splenomegaly. Diagnosis here is anti-CCP and RF are positive in more than 90% of patients. Markedly elevated ESR, often more than 85 mmH hour peripheral smear and bone marrow biopsy to rule out other causes of neutropenia 
All right, so yeah, um, patient with fatigue, non blanchable palpable purpura, glomerular nephritis with um, that's evident by uh, increase in create uh, and urine blood and protein three plus in urine. Okay, uh, then they have arthralgia, abnormal slightly elevated RF LFT, uh, rheumatoid factor is positive, low normal C three, very low C four what will help establish the diagnosis so these are the palpable purpuras with raised purple papules and plaques given okay um so here um you got to focus on the elevated lfts i guess um what helps is obtain viral hepatitis serology okay um so this was mixed cryoglobulinemia and this is i felt like this was an immuno question rather than a musculoskeletal question because i had no clue how to approach this question um i'll try to do it again um so patient with fatigue and all this let's go through this and read that again how about that uh cryoglobulinemia immunoglobulins that precipitate at less than 37 uh degrees celsius uh, type 1 associated disease okay so in type 1 it's associated with plasma cell dichrasis uh, like Waldenstorm and multiple myeloma pathogenesis are B cell oh right uh, this is the one with crab right C uh, but it doesn't oh it doesn't follow the crab right this one is the one like wait okay let's go through this um, B cell lineage malignancy, monoclonal immunoglobulin M. Clinical findings are cryoprecipitate uh, vascular occlusions, levido reticularis, uh, that's what this is, um, retiform purpura and digital ischemia, high uh, cryocrit, there's a hyperviscosity, for example, it will show blurred vision and vertigo ataxia. Uh, Lab findings are positive cryocrit, normal complements, uh, increase in erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and positive for monoclonal spike on SPEP. Okay. Um, mixed type, and this is type 2 or 3, you have chronic viremia, for example, HCV, HIV, autoimmunity, for example, SLE, uh, Sjogren's. B cell hyperactivity activation, uh, immunoglobin M, um, rheumatoid factor bound to polyclonal immunoglobulin G. Okay. Um, immune complexes, vasculitis, um, palpable purpura, glomerulonephritis, arthralgia, and neuropathy. Okay. Uh, viral hepatitis, hepatomegaly, positive for cryocrit. Uh, decrease C4, uh, positive for RF autoantibodies, positive for viral or antinuclear antibodies. Okay, so mixed cryoglobinemia syndrome is a small vessel vasculitis that causes palpable purpura, uh, glomerular nephritis, arthralgia, and peripheral uh, neuropathy. Lab abnormalities include cryoglobulins. Okay, so we have abnormalities over there. Uh, rheumatoid factor uh, we have rheumatoid factor yes and hypocomplementemia okay so that okay okay uh, chronic hepatitis c infection is the most common cause and serology should be checked in all patients right so um this was a mixed type, uh, viral hepatitis causes hepatomegaly. So, uh, slight abnormal elevated LFTs. Okay. So, patient with fatigue, non blanchable palpable purpura, glomerulonephritis, uh, arthralgia, abnormal, uh, slightly elevated LFT, rheumatoid factor positive, low normal C3, and very low C4. So, that should clue you into. Uh, mixed type of cryoglobinemia 
what would help establish the diagnosis we do viral hepatitis serology because the most common cause of this is hep c infection okay moving on again uh immuno question i struggled with the immuno question because i haven't given it a read and it's been a while so yes i'll be doing that uh next so if you don't want to miss out subscribe guys okay <laughs> Uh, 65 year old woman uh, plus recent uh, diagnosis of osteoporosis and non localized bony tenderness of the spine. Okay, so we have 65 year old with osteoporosis um, and non localized bony tenderness of the spine. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. Uh, CBC is uh, okay here. Uh, serum chemistry shows high create and calcium is uh, high. And LFT shows that vitamin D is normal. Parathyroid hormone is low. Okay. Uh, so what's the next best step? 24 hour urine calcium measurement. Uh, celiac uh, serology testing. Uh, oral bisphosphonate therapy, parathyroid scintigraphy, serum protein electrophoresis. Okay, so we have that is okay. Um, 65 osteoporosis, non localized. So, what's going on with this patient? See, calcium is high. Okay, so we have high calcium. Okay, um, what was crab? Okay. Um, so renal hypercalcemia, CRA was anemia. This patient has anemia as well, I think. No, it's at the lower end or it is, I don't remember the range. Um, CRA and D for the bone. So multiple myeloma, right? Uh, you do serum protein electrophoresis. The evaluation of reduced bone density is aimed at ruling out secondary causes of bone loss. Bone loss associated with anemia, renal insufficiency, and hypercalcemia suggests multi-myeloma. Okay. Uh, so, it was crab. C for hypercalcemia, R for renal insufficiency a for anemia b for bone pain okay. uh, close to secondary cause of bone loss malabsorption diarrhea weight loss decrease in 25 hydroxy vitamin d decrease in urine calcium excretion hyperthyroidism uh, weight loss heat intolerance tremor goiter okay um, another one is hypercortisolism uh, you see this in uh, it shows up as central BCD, cushion goid, uh, habitus, and hyperglycemia, hyperparathyroidism, hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, kidney stone, inflammatory disorder, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain, morning stiffness, increase in ESR and CRP, hypogonadism, uh, this is amenorrhea, weight loss, excuse me. Uh, anorexia and for males it's decrease in libido uh, erectile dysfunction loss of body hair multiple myeloma anemia hypercalcemia increase in create we have a 34 year, year old uh, with a chronic low back pain and tightness uh, that's been there for three months worse at night and early mornings improves gradually during the day as he moves around. Again, this is a classic presentation of what? Inflammation at ligamentous insertion. Oh, wait. Worse with right, it's uh, spondylar arthropathy, okay. Uh, this is, uh, I believe this was uh, the exertion type of, no, that was, I'm thinking spinal stenosis. Okay. Vascular type. 
inflammation at ligamentous insertion cause of chronic low back pain okay so anyways this is uh, the inflammatory one so worse with rest better with activity and sacroiliitis spinal stonus is different it's relief with leaning forward okay um, mechanical for example sorry I'm zoning out so much right now uh, mechanical for example Muscle strain, uh, disc degeneration, degeneration, uh, normal neurologic examination, paraspinal tenderness, right? If it's mechanical, it's going to be acute as well. And you will remember the trigger point or the trauma uh, event, right, that caused it. Uh, radiculopathy, uh, for example, herniated disc. Uh, this has radiation below the knee. The burning type pain, uh, sensation, I guess, tingling. Uh, Positive straight leg test, uh, SLR test, uh, neurologic deficit. Spinal stenosis, pseudoclaudication, relief with leaning forward. Inflammatory, for example, spondyloarthropathy, which is this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Worse with rest, better with activity, sacroiliitis. Uh, you have metastatic cancer. This is for patients with uh, more than a 50 year old worse at night and unrelieved even with rest okay, so similar to this uh, infectious for example osteomyelitis and distitis a recent infection or IVDU fever focal spine tenderness okay. inflammatory back pain is characterized by the gradual onset of pain and stiffness that begins at a young age less than 40 Worsens with rest, for example, at night, and improves with activity. It suggests spondyloarthropathy, for example, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, psoriatic arthritis, uh, reactive arthritis, and arthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. Let's read that again. So inflammatory back pain is characterized by the gradual onset of pain and stiffness that begins at a young age. Okay, so this was a 34-year-old. So anyone, uh, if it happens to someone with less than 40 years of age, uh, we should pay attention to that. Worse with rest, for example, at night and improves with activity. It suggests spondyloarthropathy, for example, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, arthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease. I took a long time to get there. Sorry, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> um, okay. 25 year old man, we have a 25 year old with three month history of right shoulder pain, uh, pain elicited with abduction against resistance. So, some kind of uh, rotator cuff injury there. Tenderness over heels. Okay, so now we have uh, asthenitis. Uh, right, iliac crest and tibial tuberosity. Okay, and history of um, influenza pneumonia at 12. Okay, which other additional finding is seen? Hand joint deformity or limited spine mobility, positive rheumatoid factor, proteinuria, or subcutaneous uh, nodules. Okay, so we have a 25 year old, so that goes with this rule less than 40 year with chronic back pain um, type thing okay but this is shoulder pain okay pain also with abduction tenderness over okay so yeah so they have it over here here and here as well so okay so they have antacitis that was for either plantar fasciitis but since this is not singular, then it could be because of either gonorrhea, was it? No, that was tenderness and whitus. Or spondylitis, right? Okay. Um, so what would you see in spondylitis? Hand joint deformities, no. Limited spine mobility, yes. Positive rheumatoid factor, um, no. Um, proteinuria and subcutaneous 
nodules, no. So limited spine mobility. Fluids and facetis at heel. Uh, tenderness at tendon insertion sites. It can also be seen at the costal sternal uh, junction, shoulder, um, elbow, hips, iliac crest, tibial tuberosity, and other locations. Chronic complications of antacitis uh, include fibrosis and calcification. Antacitis uh, can be isolated finding in plantar fasciitis, but is characteristic finding in spondyloarthropathies such as ankylosing spondylitis. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, antacitis can be isolated finding in plantar fasciitis versus characteristic finding in spondyloarthropathy such as ankylospondylitis. Okay, ankylosing. So here we have subchondral sclerosis, uh, widening of the sacroiliac joint space. Normal sacroiliac looks like that. Okay. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory back pain, insidious onset at age. Uh, less than 40 okay. so the shoulder pain wasn't uh, due to the rotator cuff as I initially thought it was because of this okay all right uh, symptoms more than three months relieved with exercise but not rest interesting uh, nocturnal pain uh, examination findings arthritis sacroiliitis uh, reduced chest expansion and spinal mobility, antacitis, uh, tenderness at tendon insertion sites, dactylitis, uh, swelling of finger and toes, uveitis. Complications, uh, osteoporosis, uh, vertebral fracture, um, <coughs> aortic regurgitation and quadriquina syndrome. Lab is elevated ESR and CRP, HLA-B27. Uh, association imaging is x-ray of sacroiliac joints and MRI of sacroiliac joints. Treatment of ankylosing spondylitis, uh, non-pharmacologic measures, ex uh, ex <laughs> wow, my Indian accent is coming through, yo. Um, exercise, postural exercises, um, ROM, stretching exercises, okay. Um, physical therapy as well, okay. Initial treatment. NSAIDs, for example, ibuprofen and naproxen, uh, COX-2 inhibitor, for example, silicoxib. Uh, treatment failure, disease progression. Okay, so what do you do it uh, when it gets worse? So TNF-alpha inhibitor, for example, intercept and infliximab. Anti-interleukin-17 antibodies. That's new for me. Okay. For example, sicukinumab. Okay. Interleukin 17 and that. Okay. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis (AS) is characterized by chronic inflammatory back pain and stiffness, lumbosacral tenderness, and reduced spinal range of motion. In young patients with characteristic pain, plain X-ray showing sacroiliitis can confirm the diagnosis. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis is strongly associated with HLA-B27, but HLA-B27 is not specific for ankylosing spondylitis and is not necessary for diagnosis okay so it is associated with it but uh, let me read that again as is strongly associated with hla b27 but hla b27 is not specific for as and not necessarily it's not necessary for diagnosis because it is associated with other stuff i believe um, they covered that in step one. Okay. So that's why it's mostly just clinical, right? That's what they said in young patients. In young patient with characterizing plain x-ray. Okay, so you just do x-ray. Mm. Right. So initially we give NSAIDs. Okay. Um, usually that's the first line for chronic pain, back pain. Um, then COX-2, uh, again, NSAIDs, um, and then, yeah, okay. Get that out of there, then TNF-alpha, intercept, infliximab, and, okay. 
Next question. Um, you have a 35 year old woman, pain in left um, lower extremity, left lower extremity, okay. History of twisted ankle a month ago, and then pain improved over next few weeks. Um, she began experiencing, okay, pain improved, and then over the next few weeks, she began experiencing worsening of pain in the left foot, ankle, and lower calf. Pain is burning and stinging in quality, and it's worsened by movement. Light touch of the affected area elicits severe pain. So that's a significant finding right there. Uh, X-ray shows patchy area of osteopenia of left foot and ankle. Okay, osteopenia of the left foot and ankle. So this is known as uh, it wasn't covered before uh, complex regional pain syndrome. Okay, and this is a classic finding right there. That and the fact that they had trauma that got recovered. They recovered from our trauma, and then the injury and over the next few weeks, they started feeling pain again, and it's spread now, and it's worse, okay, or bad. Okay, so what is complex region, uh, regional pain syndrome? It triggers our trauma, fracture, strain, surgery. Um, clinical features are pain, uh, severe, regional, not dermatomal, burning, stinging, right? Because dermatomal burning, stinging was herpes. Um, Edema or abnormal sweating, mesomotor changes, uh, altered skin temperature, trophic skin, uh, hair and nail changes. Diagnosis here is primarily based on clinical features, x-ray patchy demineralization, bone scintigraphy, increased uptake in affected limb. Management is physical and occupational therapy, exercise, medication, NSAIDs, antineuropathic medications, for example, pregabalin and uh, TCAs. Okay. okay. A presentation of complex regional pain syndrome. Subacute severe unilateral limb pain typically follows trauma or surgery. Within four to six weeks, characterized by burning or tingling pain per disproportionate to the injury. Pain is not dermatomal, worsened by movement or light contact this is known as allodynia yes so that was allodynia um, uh, diagnosis uh, primarily clinical criteria includes sensory allodynia hyperesthesia uh, edema subsidomotor and mesomotor changes advanced cases may exhibit trophic changes and motor weakness contractures radiographic findings often include patchy demineralization uh, so here we have a patchy area of osteopenia of left foot and ankle. Management here is, emphasizes exercise, um, physical occupational therapy, and uh, patient education. Addresses uh, comorbid depression and anxiety. Uh, medication options are NSAIDs, anti-neuropathic medication like pregabapentin or gabapentin and stuff like that. Uh, Tetracycline antidepressants, for example, amitriptyline. Okay. Um, I believe amitriptyline also has a has a neuropathic pain. It can be used off label for that as well. Uh, let me check. Okay. So yeah, uh, amitriptyline is a tris, uh, TCA that is FDA approved to treat depression in adults. The drug is also used off-label to treat chronic pain syndrome, anxiety, and insomnia. Right, so it is uh, used as a nerve pain medication as well. Right, so that um, bisphosphonates, for example, alendronate and topical lidocaine and capsaicin. Okay. Um, Right. Um, young woman climbing stairs to third floor of her apartment. Uh, left knee pain, left leg mild quadricep atrophy, and with no visible bony deformity. Okay, so here's a significant finding that there is quadricep atrophy. All right. Uh, what are the additional findings you'll see? Um, 
anterior translation of the tibia on the femur? No, um, not that because again, atrophy on the left leg mild quadricep atrophy, right? So um, you wouldn't see that though. And there has to be some kind of damage to the collateral ligaments, uh, anterior collateral ligament, right? Uh, for that to happen. Apprehension with lateral uh, translation of patella. Okay. Um, patella, again, um, something you would, I don't know, it doesn't make sense with this. Uh, Rhythma and effusion of the medial joint line. Medial joint line. Rhythma effusion. Okay. We would have some kind of finding with a valgus force there. Uh, inability to, to extend the knee, extend the knee, uh, maybe. Pain with isometric contraction of the quadriceps. Okay, so we have quadricep atrophy. There's something that happens with quadriceps, so that's the one I would go with. Tenderness at the tibial tubercle. Tenderness at the tibial tubercle. So that's like the uh, Osler, Shatler, something, something, right? Uh, so pain with isometric contraction of the quadricep, uh, patellofemoral pain syndrome (PFPS). This is the anterior view. Uh, this is where it would be. No. Okay. Again, there is no bony visible modi deformity as well, so that also takes away a lot of these. Okay, so femur, patella, patella ligament. Areas of pain, quadricep muscles, tibia, and this is the femur. Provocation of pain during tonic contraction of the quadriceps with the knee flexed, for example, squatting or lunging, strongly suggests the diagnosis. Okay, so whenever you bend the knee and you get pain, you have patellofemoral pain syndrome. Pain with isometric contraction of the quadriceps. Uh, treatment is strengthening the quadriceps and hip abductors. Okay. So patellofemoral pain. You have quadricep atrophy. Why do you get atrophy? Oh, because well, you don't use it as much, maybe? Um, uh, difficulty swallowing food uses nasal saline uh, for eyes. So this is Sjogren's, right? Uh, next best step to confirm the diagnosis, you do the SSA, SSB, right? Uh, antibodies to uh, Rho, SSA, and La, SSB. Okay. Uh, age more than 50 uh, and male. Subacute to chronic pain in the shoulder and hip riddles. Okay, so this is sounding like uh, my uh, polymyalgia. Morning stiffness uh, lasting more than one hour. Absence of point tenderness and muscle weakness. Again, same thing. Uh, constitutional symptoms like malaise, weight loss. Uh, ESR or uh, L CRP is elevated. What's the next best step? Um, next best step, you don't need to diagnose it because uh, this is clinically diagnosed. So you go straight to treating it. Uh, treating it would be... Uh, steroids right corticosteroids so prescribed low dose prednisone uh, polymyalgia rheumatica symptoms age more than 50 bilateral pain and that involvement of two or more it's more than one month by the way uh, the symptoms involvement of two of the following neck or torso shoulder or proximal arms proximal thigh or hip constitutional fever malaise weight loss okay uh, physical examination decreased active range of motion in shoulders neck and hips lab findings are esr crp elevated and normocytic anemia treatment is oral glucocorticoids okay esr is normal in osteoarthritis uh, you give NSAIDs for that and fibromyalgia low impact aerobic exercise is what you ask them to do uh, NSAIDs may also be used for ankylosing spondylitis, which can cause neck stiffness, 
with elevated ESR as well. However, ankylosing spondylitis typically occurs in younger uh, age, less than 40 years of uh, age patients, and low back pain is usually present. Okay. Uh, so we have Vietnamese women, uh, blood pressure in right arm was 140 by 90, and blood pressure in left arm was 90 by 55. They get, this is Takayatsu arteritis. Okay. Uh, large vessel, again, immuno. Um, we haven't read that in this, but this one is pretty distinct, so it's easy to remember from step one. Diagnosis, elevated. Um, this is this causes uh, subclavian steel syndrome as well, right? Uh, elevated ESR and CRP. Uh, chest X-ray, aortic dilation, widening mediastinum. Uh, CTMR angiography, wall thickening, narrowing of lumen. Okay, narrowing of lumen. Okay, <coughs> widen uh, mediastinum uh, on chest X-ray and aortic dilation. On CT, you see wall thickening. Uh, okay. uh, treatment is glucocorticoid, okay, as is with most vasculitis. Uh, patient with diverticulitis, okay, so lower left quadrant pain. Um, unbearable ankle pain after admission, okay, uh, and have had similar pain one year ago. Similar pain one year ago, okay. Diagnosis uh, diverticulitis. Uh, the way I got to gout is thinking diverticulitis usually happens because of eating low fiber foods, so maybe meat uh, and unhealthy lifestyle and all that, right? And they had a similar attack one year ago as well, uh, so that helps with gout. Uh, now, typically, we don't hear about gout happening in ankle pain, but it is uh, found there as well, okay? Um, so risk of gout, increased risk is medications, diuretics, low uh, dose aspirin, um, surgery, trauma, recent hospitalization. Okay, so this person is probably hospitalized. Okay, uh, volume depletion, diet, high protein foods, meat, seafood, high food fo uh, fat foods, fructose or sweetened beverages. Heavy alcohol consumption, underlying medical conditions, for example, hypertension, obesity, chronic kidney disease, and organ transplants. Decreased risk, dairy product intake, or vitamin C, more than 1,500 or more per day, and coffee intake, six cups or more a day. Gout typically presents as an acute monoarticular arthritis that quickly progresses to maximum intensity over within the 12 to 24 hours gout typically uh, gout typically presents as an acute monoarticular arthritis that quickly progresses to maximum uh, intensity within 12 to 24 hours triggers include alcohol use surgery trauma dehydration and certain medications for example diuretics okay so it presents as acute mono Articular arthritis, which quickly progresses to maximum intensity within 12 to 24 hours. Okay, so it's very acute. Uh, trigger include alcohol use and all of these stuff, and dehydration as well. Okay, surgery, trauma, certain medications like diuretics. Okay, this is TOFI. Okay, so history of mechanic plus joint pain and deformity. Diagnosis tophaceous scalp. Uh, aspiration uh, will show monosodium urate crystals of these things. Okay. Now, gout initially causes an episodic monoarthritis, typically affecting the first metatarsal uh, phalangeal joints and knees. Persistent hyperuricemia can lead to tophaceous gout, which is characterized by excessive monosodium urate deposition, leading to chronic inflammation and nodular deformity. Tophy commonly involve the joints of the hands and feet. Soft tissue involvement may also occur. Ears, tendons, and olecranon bursa can also be involved. Okay, so you can see it there as well. Uh, differentials. 
Uh, rheumatoid arthritis predominantly involves the small joint. You already know uh, what it looks like, right? It doesn't look like that. Uh, sort of looks like those, okay? And this is osteoarthritis, which is promoted by excessive asymmetrical mechanical joint stresses. This is called Herbidin uh, and Bocard's nodes. So these are the Bocard nodes, and this is the Heberden nodes. Okay. And joint deformity typically occurs over a prolonged period and years. Okay. And this one uh, occurs uh, in the fingers and pressure points like elbows and forearms. Whereas these ones uh, are on non-weight bearing ones and soft tissue involvement may occur as well. Hand and feet, joints and that. Okay, cool. Basically just know what it looks like. If it looks like these, uh, it's topacious gouts. Okay. Uh, 30 year old, low back pain, intermittent diarrhea, elevated CRP, Physical examination shows limited spine flexion and tenderness in the lower back. Plain radiograph reveal sacroiliac joint inflammation. What explains this? Okay. Um, if you missed it, uh, intermittent diarrhea. That's the giveaway. If it's low back pain with intermittent diarrhea with uh, sacroiliac joint inflammation, um, this thing happened because of something that's uh, causing this as well. Okay. So celiac disease, um, inflammatory bowel disease, perineoplastic syndrome, reactic, uh, reactive arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or spinal osteomyelitis. So none of these cause diarrhea except for these two, right? So celiac um, doesn't raise CRP, okay? So that leaves inflammatory bowel disease for intermittent uh, diarrhea and elevated CRP. Uh, inflammatory bowel disease is frequently associated with inflammatory arthritis, which can involve uh, the axial and peripheral joints. Treatment with NSAIDs may exacerbate the underlying bowel inflammation. Okay, so that's why we don't recommend NSAIDs for these patients. The medications used to treat the gastrointestinal manifestations of IBD, that is azathioprine and infleximab, they are also commonly used to treat associated joint disease. Okay. A 61 year old woman, two weeks history of low back pain, plus uh, constant dull aching, more pronounced at night. Okay, so the pain is uh, two week history of low back pain. Okay, so it's acute, 61 year old, and the pain is constant dull aching, more pronounced at night. Okay. Uh, she has a history of breast cancer at 55, hypertension, and no other findings. No tenderness, no uh, SLR positive. Okay, so no other finding. Uh, had breast cancer history at 55. She has hypertension, and she has low back pain uh, for the past two weeks. And 61 year old now. Okay, so what's the next best step? Epidural corticoid uh, corticosteroid injection. We do those in um, severe cases, um, not in dull ones, right? I guess, I don't know. Um, but mostly it's for chronic pain, this stuff, injections. For acute, first line would have been um, NSAIDs anyway, so it's not this. Lumbosacral spinal imaging. Um, okay, maybe, yes. Uh, opioid analgesic at bedtime. Uh, opioid. Uh, not yet. We need to first make sure what's causing the pain. Uh, supervised exercise program. Okay. Uh, trial of NSAIDs and follow up. So it would have been this uh, and follow up, right? So it would have been this. However, um, she has a history of breast cancer. So we need to make sure that she's not having. Uh, some kind of metastasis and you know recurrence okay so it would be lumbosacral spinal imaging so imaging in non-traumatic acute back pain so how do you approach it so you have someone with acute back pain uh, less than four to six weeks or less um, without history of trauma okay so there's no history of trauma so 
if there was then of course you do imaging but since there's no history of trauma significant neurologic deficit like uh, urinary retention incontinence saddle anesthesia or uh, lower extremity weakness involving multiple nerve root uh, cord compression right if they have that do an emergency mri this patient don't have it so next you go to uh the next one suspected infection now, does she have fever spinal tenderness or ibdu intravenous drug use or immunosuppression if it was yes then mri or consider x-ray plus do a esr and crp okay because so you can take out spondylitis and all the itis ones as well and, uh, tool them out okay and infection if it's that we can also capture it there. okay but this one don't have that so again suspected malignancy so this one uh ding 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 uh, current re uh, current or recent cur uh, cancer history systemic symptoms for example weight loss or multiple cancer risk factors yes mri or uh, with esr and crp okay if that wasn't there then it wasn't a complicated back pain so no imaging is needed continue with pain management okay uh, so who are high risk uh, so what are the red flags basically or high risk features in back pain so you consider MRI if any of the following is present. Quadra equina syndrome, uh, acute urinary retention or saddle anesthesia is there in this one, right? Uh, epidural abscess, um, spinal infection, like fever, immunosuppression, or intravenous drug use, okay? Then comes malignancy, current recent malignancy, uh, unexpected weight loss, okay? other uh, severe bilateral progressive weakness focal spine tenderness coagulopathy and age more than 50. okay so malignancy recurrent or recent malignancy and unexpected weight loss that's the one that was asked here okay hydrolyzine hydrolyzine it causes drug induced lupus erythematous okay so gotta remember that about hydrolyzine symptoms what do you get you got chest <laughs> chest pain uh, pleural rub swelling and tenderness in hands and knee okay swelling and tenderness in hands and knee uh, drug induced lupus erythematous should be suspected in patients developing acute onset of fever arthralgia and serositis after initiation of causative medications. Hydrolyzine is strongly associated with drug induced lupus erythematis. Uh, treatment in includes cessation of the causative medication and symptoms management. All right. So I put this here so we can know more about it. So features of drug-induced uh, SLE, clinical features, acute onset, constitutional symptoms, fever, malaise, arthralgia, serositis, pleuritis, pericarditis. Okay, so you get pleural rub in this as well. There was also another one we saw pleurisy in. What was it? Somewhere up here, right? Um, it was here, pleurisy, SLE. That's where we saw it. So. Only one that we have to remember, it's not multiple. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, so chest pain, uh, pleural rub, swelling and tenderness in hands and knees. Drug induced uh, lupus erythematis uh, should be suspected. Did that already? Serositis, uh, pleur pleuritis, and pericarditis, rash, less common compared to SLE. Risk factor, high drug dose. Prolonged use more than three months and show slow escalator status. Okay. Uh, lab findings: antihistone antibodies and A ANA, right? Ninety-five um, percent, ninety percent. Implicated here is this is the specificity. This is sensitivity. Uh, implicated drugs: 
Now, most common, procanamide, hydrolyzine, penicillamine. Uh, others are minocycline, uh, PNF-alpha inhibitor. Uh, these are enterocept and infliximab and isoniazid. Uh, these cause drug-induced lupus. Increase in ALP in elderly patient and enlarged prostate. This is Paget's because we don't have any other abnormal findings. Uh, enlarged prostate is normal in elderly patients. So Paget's disease of the bone, BD. It is not metastatic bone disease because no bone pain and PSA will be elevated. Uh, smooth and enlarged prosthetic enlargement is common in older men and is usually benign. Uh, Osteoarthritis versus hemochromatosis. Hand symptoms are the same. MCP swelling and tenderness. Uh, hereditary um, hemochromatosis arthropathy often resembles osteoarthritis but differs in age at onset. Okay, so osteoarthritis ages less than 40, whereas this one is in older patients, more than 40. Uh, predilection for the second and third metacarpal phalangeal joints and wrists and presence of chondrocalcinosis, okay, for hemochromatosis. Sorry, um, I said that opposite. Less than 40 in hemochromatosis and more than 40 is osteoarthritis uh, incidences, okay. So in hemochromatosis, uh, we have third metacarpal phalangeal joints and wrist and presence of uh, chondrocalcinosis, right, uh, the pseudogout thing. Uh, management is primarily symptomatic, uh, for example, acetaminophen and SAIDs. But therapeutic phlebotomy is necessary to minimize other symptom complications of HH, like liver disease. Shoulder pain, uh, decreased range of motion, injection of lidocaine in the subacromial space relieves the pain, but active and passive range of motion remain limited. So DX, adhesive capsulitis, um, bicep tendinopathy, calcific tendinitis, rotator cuff uh, tear, and rotator cuff tendinopathy. Okay. So you would be thinking it's probably these. But then you need to go back and read again. It says injection of lidocaine is in the sub uh, acromial space, relieves the pain. But active and passive motion, range of motion remain limited. So here, the thing is, the shoulder pain, if it, we need to figure out if it's subacromial or supraacromial, right? If it's below the acromial space, um, if you apply lidocaine injection, um, it basically affects the nerves there, right? So if there was some kind of injury uh, and this area subacromial space the pain will be relieved and uh, there will be improvement in range of motion however the pain is relieved but there is no improvement in the range of motion right but active and passive range of motion remains limited still okay what does that tell us that the injury is not in the subacromial space okay so all of these are subacromial rotator cuff tear, uh, rotator cuff tendinopathy, okay? So that leaves bicep tendinopathy, calcific tendinitis. Um, it's not this because of the way it is. Uh, it says shoulder pain, so it's not going to be that. Uh, calcific tendinitis and hadesial capsulitis. Calcific tendinitis, um, the pain wouldn't be relieved with uh, lidocaine, I guess, uh, in this area, if it was that. No, it would be. Uh, also, I don't know what, I, I'm not sure what this would look like, um, but I'm sure I crossed it out in the vignette somehow uh, for some reason, or I had a better reason to pick adhesive capsulitis. So adhesive uh, capsulitis is the answer here um, because it's above the uh, subacromial space where the injection was given. So the pain will be better for this as well. However, um, the range of motion is not improved. So that tells you that it is this.
Okay, so decreased pain and restored range of motion suggests subacromial pathology. Okay, so decreased pain and restored range of motion would tell you that it's subacromial pathology such as rotator cuff tendinopathy or calcific tendinitis. Okay, so that's the one over there. Okay. If it was restored, it would have been one of these two. Okay, cool. Uh, decreased pain but continued restriction of range of motion, both active and passive, suggests glenohumeral joint pathology such as adhesive capsulitis. When examination of shoulder range of motion is limited due to pain, local anesthetic can be injected into the subacromial space to diffuse around the rotator cuff and help distinguish between subacromial pathology, for example, rotator cuff tendinopathy, and glenohumeral pathology like adhesive capsulitis. Following the injection, patients with subacromial pathology will show improved passive range of motion. Patient with adhesive capsulitis will not. Uh, differential. Okay, here we go. So calcific tendinitis. <laughs> I like how I added it because I knew I would forget it. Um, calcific tendinitis caused by calcium crystal deposits on rotator cuff tendons. Rotator cuff tendinopathy and rotator cuff tears can cause pain with shoulder abduction and external rotation along with limited active range of motion. However, because rotator cuff tendons travel through the subacromial space, subacromial injection of the local anesthetic will typically relieve pain and restore passive range of motion. Okay. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, carpal tunnel pain radiate to where and how to confirm it so it goes into the palm the first three fingers and a half and um, it goes up to the forearm uh, that's what they were uh, you need to pick and like if you knew that then you know it's carpal tunnel the answer and so it can radiate to anterior aspect of the forearm because they'll be like, uh, there is numbness and tingling in the forearm and in the fingers. What's the pathology? Right? What's the diagnosis? So carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, you already know all of this. Anyways, um, I'll still cover it because perfectionist, yo. Um, risk factor, obesity, pregnancy, diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, ESRID, uh, hemodialysis, Clinical presentation, pain and paresthesia is median nerve distribution, first three and a half digits. Uh, positive felon and kinel, right? Felon is where you um, go downwards, I think. Your hands, you put against each other uh, the back of your palms. So back of your hands, both touching each other. And then tinel is where you tap, uh, right? believe uh, or drug in uh, carpal compression test so severe disease uh, weakness of thumb abduction at an uh, obsession atrophy of tenor eminence sorry I'm zoning out again focusing back uh, confirmatory test nerve conduction studies this is important remember that that would be your next best step um, if they asked you what to do here, uh, what the next best step is. So that's nerve conduction study. That's what you would do. How to confirm it. That's NCS. Okay. Um, that's it. Treatment is wrist splinting, corticosteroid injection, surgery for severe or refractory symptoms. Um, Behet syndrome or Behet syndrome. I say Behet because uh, uh, epidemiology is Turkish, Middle Eastern, or Asian descent. So I say it in that way so I remember the epidemiology uh, of Behet syndrome. So young adults. Okay. Uh, I already told you it's kind of like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but I was wrong. It's actually kind of like reactive arthritis, not rheumatoid. Okay. It has recurrent painful. Or oral ephthalus ulcers 
genital ulcers, eye lesions, for example, uveitis, skin lesions, for example, erythema nodosum, echiniform lesions, and thrombosis. Evaluation, lethargy, uh, exaggerated skin ulceration, and minor trauma, for example, needle stick. Okay. And biopsy, nonspecific vasculitis of different sized vessels. It's sort of like reactive arthritis, but reactive arthritis happens after GI related things, whereas this is more of um, can't see, can't pee, can't touch my skin. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't work here. Anyways, that was can't see, can't pee, can't bend my knee, right? But here we have the skin one as well. Okay, so yeah. I said syndrome. Oh, what's this? I'm trying to remember how this was tested. So they gave you all of those, and then they asked, right? Uh, what uh, gives it away is the oral ulcer. Uh, you don't find oral ulcers in reactive arthritis. Okay. Um. Also, eye lesions. You don't find it in that either. Also, genital ulcers. I guess. I think it's just. I don't know why I said it this way, but. Anyways, uh, probably the vignette was about uh, similar to reactive arthritis. That's why. Okay. Uh, disseminated gonococcal uh, infection can present with purulent monoarthritis and fever. Synovial fluid analysis typically shows a leukocyte count of approximately 50,000 per mm with no uh, organism or crystals on microscopy. Uh, diagnosis requires synovial fluid uh, net testing. Um, blood cultures and net of samples from mucosal sites, for example, urethma, yeah, sorry, urethra, rectum, pharynx, and cervix. Uh, Disseminate gonococcal infection manifestation is purulent monoarthritis or the triad of tenosynovitis, dermatitis, migratory. Pari arthralgia diagnosis here is um, the swab or the net and treatment is uh, third generation cephalosporin intravenously okay these are not uh, important to go over so I'll just leave this here for you to take a screenshot or uh, pause the video and read it yourself so I'll make this a little bigger this is from um step one right so you can look at that take a photo print it out post it on your wall look at it every day now uh, one each okay uh, again this thing it's not necessary i just put it in because if i have time i want to look, give it a look over we'll go over this one actually Uh, this is like from CNS, sort of. Covered it there, but differential diagnosis of neuromuscular weakness. So we'll start from muscle fibers, um, muscular dystrophies, uh, polymyositis and dermatomyositis, hypothyroidism, corticosteroids, and HIV myopathy. Okay, so all of these will cause that. Uh, neuromuscular junction. Um, Masthenia gravis, Lambert Eaton syndrome, organophosphate poisoning, botulinum. Then comes peripheral nerves. This is Guillain Barr syndrome, uh, hereditary primary motor sensory neuropathy. Um, hereditary primary motor sensory neuropathy. I don't know about that one. Uh, diabetic neuropathy, uh, amyloid neuropathy, myeloma, and lead poisoning. Then upper motor neurons, leukodystrophies. Right. Um, JC and multiple poly, whatever. Vasculitis, uh, brain mass, vitamin B12 deficiency, uh, ALS. Okay, uh, ALS, upper motor neuron. Okay, and then anterior horn cells, spinal muscular atrophy, ALS, perineoplastic syndrome, poliomyelitis. And that's it. We are done for the day. Good luck with all the questions. See you in the next one.